Arc Dream presents Episode 1 of Hearts of Iron, a 5th edition D&D campaign set in the Broken Empire. In Episode 0, the players created adventurers, and we introduced the Broken Empire setting. Now we start the adventure The Sea Demon's Gold, available from Arc Dream Publishing. I'm Shane Ivey, the Dungeon Master. The players are Mark Finn of the Monty Hall Zine as human rogue Baldo Vandalarius, Chris Spivey of Darker Hue Studios as the wood elf ranger Thallus Longbarrow, Acer Tolentino of the Redacted Files podcast as human fighter Astartus, and Megan Tolentino of the Redacted Files podcast as the dwarf cleric Key. Well, let's start at the top of the of the character list on uh on the roll twenty thing here. Yeah. That's Acer then. Oh no, okay. Uh, so yeah. Astartus is a soldier who apparently has taken up the sailor's life and is very loyal to the captain of the Heart of Iron and is basically just seeing the world as getting beat up in the phalanx was not uh, was not a good way to live to a long life okay so um so if I, let's see do you where where did a come from is he from is he from zero proper the yes the city state that's at the heart of the the broken empire and is being occupied for the last couple of hundred years by its conquerors yes so how did uh, uh how do you think how do you think astartus gets along with the holy guard of zero which is the Samaran sort of occupying forces that keep the peace and make sure that none of the old bad temples get rebuilt probably killed a couple <laughs> so not great not great <laughs> okay it's a very energetic discourse in back out <laughs> <laughs> right as you know like the all of your ancient theological discussions go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very good. So who's going next? Uh, Thalas. Uh, so I've, I've changed. I am no longer a grim, dark paladin. Okay. Um, in fact, a, a grim dark ranger. Well, a little less grim, but still a <laughs> dark ranger. Okay. That, that still hunts for monsters. So some of this backstory is a little similar, but it's uh, a little more carefree. I think it'll fit in better with the party. Okay. Oh, darn. I was and... really hoping for that dark cloud to help us uh, make sure we didn't run out of fresh water. <laughs> uh, and he is, a, uh, he is a wood elf. So um, oh. if, you've, uh, if, you, if you've read my, uh, some of my essays about what some of the uh, non-human races are like, around here what what is what's elfish about him like what do people what stands out you know what i mean primarily his ears they're um fairly long if any of you've ever read poison elves back from the 90s oh totally yeah so incredibly exaggerated long ears that would be the most ouch, elven-esque feature but a lot of his personality he seems to always never fit quite in around humans there's always something a little bit off Okay, very good. And what? And can you describe what does he? Uh, what does he carry around? What's what does he get up to? What's what's he like? What do people? What do we know about him? On first blush, um, the thing that you'll always know is that no matter what happens, he always seems to have a plan. It may not be the best plan, but he will have a plan when something happens. Oh, right. um, great! <laughs> <laughs> always armed with a, a long bow and a rapier. Uh, dressed in leather armor and tries to keep quiet and keep an eye on things more than anything else. All right. All right. Who's next in the list? Baldo Vandalarius. Gentleman, man about town, raconteur, and victim of circumstance. Uh, I find myself on this ship working off um, well, let's call it a, a, a prison sentence of sorts. Uh, I got caught doing something I 
uh, really shouldn't have been doing. And so I have been bonded to this ship uh, to work off my debt to the city state. And I have taken a shine to the captain who uh, seems to tolerate my presence better than most. I am. Uh, I imagine she's, she's probably the one that bought your, uh, bought yes. your contract. So to speak. yes, that's right. So now uh, you owe her instead of owing the, uh, the, instead of owing the city. And the sooner we find, uh, some, some sort of, uh, side venture lucrative opportunities, uh, the sooner it's going to be for me to actually purchase and, and pay off that debt, that debt. So I am here, uh, on a work visa <laughs> and, uh, I'm, uh, I'm just looking for opportunities at this point. Um, uh, Vandalarius, uh, or Vandalarius is a friend to those who have no friends and an enemy to those who have no enemies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So man for all seasons. Oh, that's, that's right. And uh, um, Baldo is uh, uh, quite uh, familiar with, uh, with Key's workmanship, uh, her, uh, her artistic uh, abilities, and uh, is, has, has chatted her up in the hopes of maybe putting together a lucrative venture uh, of some kind. Uh, a little, a little worried about Thallus, uh, for no other reason than uh, my mode of uh, uh, op my modus operandi is if there's uh, if there's no plan, I'll wing it, and if there is a plan, I'll probably ignore it. So um, I, I'm I'm worried that uh, that I may go left when he goes right, and we end up knocking heads. And. Uh... Who's, who's next? Is that, uh, Key, you're, the, you're yes. the last one on the line. Uh, so Key is a dwarven lady. She is from Iskutai, which uh, in Earth terms is sort of like the Mongolian steppes. Uh, I think she sort of lived on the on the borders more where there's mountains and she does is from a dwarven colony. Uh, she is a cleric of Sahayak, who is a god of the underworld and the moon and um, <laughs> dead people. Uh, she is also a craftsman. She does a lot of jewelry, uh, which she loves. She's a little bit greedy. Uh, she has a necklace that she made and then decided it was too nice to sell it to the person who commissioned it. Um, so now she has to find someone who's worthy to sell it to, uh, which she hasn't found anyone so far. So she is figures a ship is a good way to get around trying to find that person. Right. Okay. Very good. I um I, I went back and forth with uh with Kurt a little bit on the uh like the the emblem that that I thought would would really fit for the uh the the god you talking about so he's still working on it but uh what i have in mind and, and i think he's going to make it look good is a uh, it's like a, a, a half moon or a mm -hmm. quarter moon being eaten by a griffin i oh, like wow. that that's awesome <laughs> wow that's pretty cool what else can we introduce about your characters maybe some of your personality traits like what really stands out can bear in mind that um if you're don't have tons of experience with fifth edition that uh, your personality traits and bonds and and those things are easy ways for you to get uh, inspiration which will give you uh, advantage on a roll if you when you when you need it most right well when someone questions my courage I never back down no matter how dangerous the situation so you're like Biff in the uh... Back to the Future. <laughs> or not Biff. You're like the main guy when he gets called chicken. Marty <laughs> McFly. Marty. There he goes. There it's been go. too long. Big, big burly, scarred Marty McFly. Yeah. <laughs> I am loyal to my captain first, everything else second. Bear that in mind. 
I guess I really bought into this whole sailing thing. I want to buy my own ship. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay, who's who, uh, who's next? Or if you or if you'd rather save it as a surprise, that's totally fine too. Don't let me don't let me uh, peer pressure you into anything. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there because I, I my character is absolutely guileless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'll go next because uh, mine's, mine's I'm an open book too. Uh, I would rather make a new friend than a new enemy. I value freedom. Chains were meant to be broken as are those who would forge them. Something important was taken from me and I aim to steal it back. Um, I'll go ahead and give you guys this. You guys have noticed from time to time that he carries a, a, a tattered scrap of material. It looks like it might've been from a, a blanket or something like that. It's old and it's, it's very dirty. And, and uh, he, he, but Baldo always has it on him. Uh, and uh, from time to time, he'll, you'll see him kind of uh, fidgeting with it. Uh, and then he'll, you know, quickly put it put it up if you see somebody looking and then uh yeah uh if there's a plan i'll forget it if i don't forget it i'll ignore it uh he tends to go on a wing and a prayer and does anybody have anything else we'd like to share uh key is also uh pretty much open i i sort of gave it away in that she likes money and pretty shiny things. Um, so most of my personality traits are related to that. But she she will do anything to get her hands on something rare or priceless. Um, and I'm a bit taken aback when people haven't heard of me, especially in regards to my my immense crafting abilities. That is always fun. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah, you look really angry. I am. Someone probably said something rude about my my jewelry. So it's 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 not the it's not the lack of beard. It's the because <laughs> that'll piss a dwarf off, you know. I I specifically mentioned that she doesn't have a beard. Okay. All right. I'm going with the non-bearded dwarf uh, heresy. Fair enough. Well, non-bearded female dwarf heresy. You know, I'm you know I, I'm I'm good either way. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not sure that uh, in the in the grand scheme of things, uh, that's a hill I want to die on. <laughs> okay, so each of you ought to be able to move your token around. So test that out, and let's make sure I haven't messed anything up irreparably. <laughs> cool. All right. So. Um, and just as a word of warning, I've, uh, I'm, I'm cat sitting for my daughter, and uh, so her her cat is stuck down here in my office because our cat upstairs hates and detests every other animal in the world except for human <laughs> beings. So, and uh, tolerate <laughs> right, and uh, and uh, so uh, so Becca's cat Moose is down here, and he is extremely loud and affectionate so if you hear if you hear little mousy squeaks that's the noise he makes all right good deal yeah uh all right so so you're all crew on the heart of iron which is a uh, a merchant ship uh that originally out of zero which is the uh, the great old ancient city state where uh where the captain is from uh captain harrian and a couple of you, uh, a couple of you are, and a number of your crewmates. Although your crewmates come from, uh, come from all over. There, uh, it's it's a merchant ship, so there's there's a uh, like a, a, car, a cargo uh, hold underneath the main deck. the the uh, the main the the deck is surrounded by um, by this kind of fence. Uh, of uh, of posts that are connected to encourage you to not fall off, and uh, and it has uh, it has a one central mast in the center, and there's a big sail that's overhead that is not going to be visible on the map uh, on account of it's just two dimensions, 
uh, and it would get in the way. But pretend that there is a big billowing sail, lateen style kind of sloping sail that runs from the mast, uh, you know, uh, sideways, depending on which way you're going. Okay. Okay. And uh, your your fellow crewmates, there uh, there are only four. Uh, four tokens for them on the map right now, just for the state for uh, economy of space. But there are a great many, uh, a great many about, especially because you are uh, presently in the midst of a billowing, terrible storm, which Yikes. has gotten got everybody's attentions and is forcing all of you soaking wet to be constantly working and, uh, you know. The people that are the, the crewmen who crew or who are who are good at uh, athletics uh, are uh, are tasked with being up on the mast and up on the up in the rigging and making sure that things stay where they're supposed to be. Uh, does that do, do, does that include any of uh, any of you? I've got acrobatics at plus five, and I also, also get deck saves. So I I think I'll. Uh be able to help out in this regard. Okay. I'm in a similar boat, so I'll do the same. Sure. All right. So up in the rigging and then uh and then at the same time, you know, the 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 rest of the crew that's on deck is dealing with ropes and uh dealing with the um uh the tiller in the uh in the stern of the ship. That's where uh Captain Harrion is and Rusa who's one of her lieutenants and uh, now, do I, do any of you have proficiency with water vehicles? I do. This is Astartes does. Astartes, okay. So you're gonna be you're gonna be one of her go-to people because you actually know your way around boats better than a lot of these uh, a lot of these wasters. <laughs> but you're out in this terrible storm in the Sea of Storms, which is aptly named named. You've learned. Uh, you're out in this storm. Uh, searching for this forgotten, haunted, supposedly, and uh, treasure-choked, supposedly, island that was that was uh, that was supposed to have an abandoned temple to the sea demon, which whose genuine name has been forgotten over many, many, many years. But there was a, there was the supposedly this extinct people who worshipped the sea demon and sacrificed to it to appease its wrath uh, and they've disappeared or gone extinct and in the meantime uh, all of that treasure that they sacrificed in their great temple has just been sitting there or so you've heard waiting for somebody brave enough to come along and take it and so that is your goal because the four of you have convinced the captain that uh, you're just that brave <laughs> and uh, you, the the deal you have, the deal you have with uh, with Captain Helion is, uh, you get to the get to the island. The four of you are the ones who have volunteered to, or in Baldo's case, possibly been voluntold to do this, uh, <laughs> to uh, to find the treasure. And if you find any treasure, you split half of it with her, and then she'll divvy it up with the rest of the crew. But since you're going to be taking all the risks of possibly getting your souls stolen by a demon of the sea you get a ha you get half of it all to yourselves i find these terms extremely acceptable now if we could yeah. just get out of this blasted storm right so i'm getting to question my life choices <laughs> <laughs> has a start has been uh, been uh, been iffy on this 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 scheme now that the storm's set in yes uh, i i very much know that the sea is on brand and uh i i, I I begin to question the the validity of these rumors. Uh, have you been questioning them out loud to your to your fellow uh, adventurers and Loudly these three and crewmates? <laughs> and, all right, very good. Uh, okay, so uh, it has is, to be it, loud now in the middle of this storm. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Well, and this is a great time to to be. Let's see, you're down on the deck, aren't you? So you've got key right over there that you can complain to and. Captain Harry and is near you. Uh, you're, I, I, I show you at the at the stern of the ship as it's kind of uh, leaping around on the waves and getting pounded by rain. So you're near the uh, near the tiller, which the captain and uh, Rusa are, uh, are are wrestling and trying to get it to stay straight. 
to keep the athletics ship going of, uh, where they plus, want it to. I have an athletics of plus five, so I will help with that. Oh, very good. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're big and burly. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put you on the tiller instead of Rusa because you're going to be <laughs> way stronger than him. So here, I'm going to move. I'm moving you around over here. So you're on the tiller now. The captain is standing nearby, shouting orders and directions and things. And as all this is going on, it's incredible. It's loud. Is there's there's lightning in the distance and sometimes pretty nearby. The waves are immense. And uh, as the wind, this wind suddenly picks up, and a spar snaps from the uh, from the mast and uh, from the sail. Let's see who's gonna. You know what? Give me give me alertness rolls. Key and a stardust, the two of our perception rolls, rather. Uh, the you two are nearest to where it's swinging in and going to cause problems. Uh, do you want often? me to make it for Easter in the in roll 20? Yeah, can you do that? Yeah, uh, thanks. I don't yeah. know how often I've said make an alertness roll, <laughs> uh, right? Right, you know what I mean. I always, say yeah, wait, am I clicking on it over and over? Yep. <laughs> Maybe. Let's see. So what you need to do is select the token that you want to do the roll for, ah, okay. and then go into your character sheet and click on the skill, and that should do it. Okay, I just told it to roll for to roll for key, and it looks like it's rolling all with advantage. So I've got yeah, I've got a couple of successful rolls for acrobatics no, and perception showing. I was on, on the wrong page. Oh, okay. I was on the settings page. Right, right. All right. So the um, the sp- okay the sheets. Uh, this is something useful to know as we're kind of finding our way here. The sheets ha- you can tell it whether to roll um, with advantage or not, and. Okay, uh, Thalas, I'm on, I'm I'm tinkering with your sheet right now just to just 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 to find it. Um, here we go. Okay, so if you're looking at the main character sheet mm-hmm. at the top at the top right, you've got a little menu nestled between the main sections. That's core, bio, spells, and a little settings gear. So if you click that settings gear, then right underneath that, there's a line where it says roll queries, and by default, it's set at always roll advantage. So you can click that and tell it uh, uh, advantage like toggle advantage toggle or query advantage, right, or never roll with advantage, exactly. So you can either leave it with adva- always rolling advantage and just remember to only look at the, uh, the first one, the first response, right, unless you're rolling with advantage. Um, the, other adva- the other advantage of that is if you have to roll with disadvantage, then in that case, you just use the lower of the two responses instead of using the one to the left or choosing which is higher if you're rolling with advantage. So that's that, that's how uh, so that's how all that works. All right. So you may all right. So back here. Then. And let's I'll see. Wait. So I got yeah, thirteen is going to succeed for key, and let's see if you can get it with a Stardus. All right, I have it listed for, hey, you know what else we can do here is change your names in Roll20 to your character names. All right. Like it's it's going to be in the oh, I see. main settings menu up at the top right. Display name, got it. Display name, exactly. That, should, that, should, that way in the little uh, uh, chat window where the dice rolls show up, it ought to show up as your character name mm-hmm. instead. And that'll gotcha. help me keep track of what's what. So when you, when you do die rolls, it pops in at the bottom of the list, right? Yeah, at the okay. in the in the little in the chat uh, window. Yeah, in the, yeah, in the chat window. Okay. All right. All right. So so let's see, Megan. See if you can go to your character sheet to Key's mm-hmm. sheet and make a skill roll for Key. Like select the token first, and <laughs> then go to the character sheet and find the skill and just click on the name of the skill. Yeah, there we go, perfect. See, that's, and that's how it comes up. So here's what's happening, right? Let's get back into it. You're on the ship, it's very stormy, and the spar snaps and starts swinging in, slamming towards 
uh, towards Captain Harrion. So Astartus and Key, you both happen to be in a position because you're both at the stern of the ship near where she is. Astartus, you're on the tiller uh, and Key, you're not. You're like hauling on a rope or something. And as this thing is swinging in, either of you or both of you, since you both rolled well with your perception, could run in there and uh, shove her out of the way, but that risks you getting clobbered by the thing instead. It's not a guarantee, but it's a risk. I will take that risk. Yes. Okay. All right. So Astartus jumps from the tiller and the ship kind of lurches a little bit because suddenly it doesn't have uh, anybody, you know, tilling it. And uh, Astartus, let's see, your armor class is, are, are you in your full full panoply, like your full, your, your regular heavy armor, mail and... Uh, yes, and, if, uh, if I'm going to die, whatnot, which is likely, I'm going to die fully armored. I mean, it'll help you sink faster and yes. that'll, that, will, that will make the agony <laughs> that much more brief. I will tired. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to assume you don't have your shield out and ready, though, because you've, uh, you know, because you've been working the tiller. So we can assume that's like hanging on the, that fence that I yep. described that surrounds the, 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 the thing. Uh, okay, so in that case... Uh, Astartus, you are armor class 16 with your ar with your uh, heavy armor, and this thing is swinging at you and is going to make an attack roll against you. It needs a 16 or better. It rolls an 11 plus 6 because it's a big giant spar, which means it hits and might just clobber you to death. I should <laughs> give you all a belated warning that uh, again, if, if you've played a lot of 5th edition, you know this perfectly well, but there, there are basically two games built into 5th edition. There's the game that you play as first level characters, which are very vulnerable and have very little plot protection. And then there's the game you play as every other level in the, in the, in the game, right. <laughs> where your hit points have gone up a bit and you've got some cushioning. Uh, so having said that, and with apologies in advance, if I kill Acer, <laughs> like uh, on the first, literally the first rolls of the game. I like to you wait till you, after you hit him to give us that brief. <laughs> so, yeah, do you volunteer to take the damage? Oh, by the way, uh, okay, but you're in luck because my 2d6 roll, which could have been catastrophic, instead <laughs> rolled two ones. So A glancing blow. Two points of damage. Nice. And uh, Acer, you need to make a, an athletic, a strength athletics check at DC 10 to not get smashed overboard as you just sort of barely, avo barely avoid getting your head knocked in. Oh no. Okay, so that's a total of seven. Uh oh. Which is Can, can I grab a, a rope and swing down? Does, wait a second, does- Alice, I'll, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, oh, oh did he, was that with advantage? Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. Uh, I thought yeah, strength it, saves for fighters were, were the, at advantage. Not all the, no, no, there's, there's a, the, in certain circumstances, you might get advantage uh, if you're a barbarian and you happen to be going crazy with rage, then you gotcha. get advantage strength checks. All right. So, uh, Thalys, you were, ta you were wanting to, uh, to try to swing down there and, and save Astartus's bacon. Is that right? If possible. It's possible. It's risky. Uh, but it's possible. So it'll need a, it'll need an acro. I'm going to say it's going to need two things, an acrobatics check to get you swinging over there as that much of a badass, and then an athletics check to keep hold of him because he's so immensely large and heavy. Can I start with a run and turn into a dive to get an advantage on my roll? Uh, you know, sure. Yeah, I'll give you that. That's what happened. Good, because oh, that first roll that. was horrible. <laughs> was that a natural one and a, and a, and a, and a, a natural, natural 20, 20 in the same roll? Oh, oh that's wow. That's cool. Can, can my okay. nat 20 mean I don't need to make a straight? <laughs> <laughs> you just look really good doing it. Like, I'll, like uh, You know what? I'll give you advantage with the athletics check. Oh, and nice. You can, you can with because of that critical. So this is, he got slammed over and is about to, 
you know, about to go tumbling. I'm, I'm moving your tokens around for you. So, you know, I'm sorry. I don't think be rude. Exploding um, advantage. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, right. so you've, you've arrowed yourself down toward a, a start of seeing what he was, what it was about to happen to him. And you can make that athletics check with advantage because you got there so nimbly. Don't oh, need it because they call me now. <laughs> Is that another natural 20? Yep. Holy moly. Wow. All right. Every one of you, please take uh, inspiration. Mark it on your sheet. <laughs> nice. Seeing uh, Astartus grab, uh, I'm sorry, seeing Thallus grab Astartus in midair and uh, Zorro <laughs> him back up onto the deck. Oh, that's awesome. And wow. uh, if, 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 if Astartus was a nubile young lady, she would be totally in love with you from now on. <laughs> As it is, that's, told, that's up to Astartus. Because he's a no, I, I just hate you more. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first time I've heard that. Wow. All right. Well done. Uh, can can okay. I cap it off by swinging back up to, the, to where I was in one fluid motion with all those 20s? Just uh, to uh, rub in the hatred? <laughs> You can try it with another uh, another acrobatics check. Close enough, man. Yeah, sixteen will still work. All right. Well, Thallus, put yourself where you, yeah where you want to be, and uh, that's crazy. Okay, so this is why you bring elves along. They're good luck, obviously. And uh, so the so there's there's cheering that you you know you can sort of barely hear over the over the the storm and the waves and. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, Baldo, yes, you're on the, you're on the, you're up, up in the, up in the rigging, and uh, as the, uh, as Astartus gets back where he is and starts, you know, uh, gets himself back on the, on the tiller. Uh, Astartus, are you kind of shaken by this, or, or, or are you just sort of gritting your teeth and more determined than ever? Or or what? How do you how do you react to that near brush with, with the deeps? I think I am gritting my teeth because yeah. I need to demonstrate that I am on the ball. <laughs> right. Okay. So as the the ship is kind of uh, kind of lurching and and coming back into uh, you know getting getting uh, 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 back into, uh, into onto its course, uh, one of the sailors, Pataja, who's uh, who's a, a buddy of yours, he's a good natured fellow. Um, is moving moving along the deck when the uh, the ship like you know you have this weird this weird perfectly timed mix of waves where on the one side it suddenly lurches way up high and on the other side it dips into a valley and the whole ship kind of turns sideways for an instant and Baldo you can just you can see just for an instant this is going to send uh, poor Pitaja spinning overboard himself just all right like nearly happened with astartus i glance back at, at uh phallus and say well if you can do it and uh dive to try and catch pataja all right uh all right so roll roll acrobatics to grab him safely all right <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> you guys are crazy <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you grab, you save, you save Pataja, and he is, uh, he kind of, you know, yeah, you, you uh, haul him back from the brink, and he kind of looks around with his eyes wide and the rain pouring all over him, and just at that moment, this immense wave thunders over the whole ship, Ooh. and every one of you needs to make a, a, an athletics test. Athletics. And as it's pushing you, some of your crewmates are getting getting shoved over. You hear a couple of of uh, sort of receding cries of of terror as uh, as they go flying. And let's see here. Stardust got a fifteen. Thallus, uh, you were well. You have an option. You had inspiration. So if you wish. You can use that now to cling for dear life, or if you uh, want to save that for later, you can uh, you can go flying. Let's cling for dear life. All right. All so right. so mark off your inspiration, and key. You're in the same boat, except inspiration is not going to help you any because you rolled horribly. You got a yeah. four and a three. So. <laughs> 
uh, everybody, you know, like uh, Astartes, you're, you're probably near enough to see. Thallus, uh, you're up there and have a good view of that side of the ship as you're just like clinging to the mast. And you see, you see your poor dwarf friend um, getting washed straight over the side uh -oh. with the waves. Splash. And when the wave finally recedes, it, it's not just you and your fellow crewmates around uh, uh, visible here anymore. Can I make uh, an investigation uh, check to see who's missing from the well, uh, ship? You could, but you're distracted oh, right now. I see. Because wow. there's suddenly at least half a dozen of these strange, these strange uh, folk on the on the deck with you uh, they they have seaweed like hair uh scaly skin savage teeth uh you think if, if you're are you uh you're are you really good at, at, at investigation baldo are you proficient with it uh yes uh i've yeah, got it at so a plus can, four. Oh yeah so you can make up the one near make out that the one nearest you seems to have uh have gills and um but the, they look they look human apart from all that. Uh, they're wearing shimmering scaly tunics and carry thin swords of sea green bronze. And uh, they are they sort of stand with perfect steadiness on the deck of the ship uh, as if they're as if they're perfectly well at home and uh, let out. Uh, they, they start letting out these loud, challenging, hissing cries. Uh, and, uh, and so everybody roll initiative. So remember, pick your, select your token and then, uh, and then go to your sheet and you can click initiative and it should roll it for you in the window. Yeah, wow, the initiative roller is, appears to be totally boinked. Okay, so knowing that, that initiative is screwy, next time it comes up, we ought to just roll raw d20s and add yeah. your number to it manually. Yes. Okay, so let's see. So so key uh let's see. Key your role it said came up as a 3 and then it gave you a plus 3 bonus for some reason. But it should just be a flat 3. So I'm going to make it 3. I've got a uh there's a turn order tool in roll 20 uh in the menu that's usually to the left side of your screen is like a little clock symbol and if you click on that it'll call up the turn order and characters that are that are that are listed in it um so baldo your initial role is a lowly one uh which will put you at a nine and thalus your initial role is an 18 which will put you at a 21 and who are we missing we are missing a stardust so let's see oh no a is yes, there it just didn't show up in the list Okay, so that was a natural four. And then does the Stardust have a dexterity modifier? He gets a plus two to initiative. Okay, so that would be a total of six. I at least get to go before the drowning dwarf. <laughs> I worked okay. hard to get where I am. <laughs> All right, plus one. So that's a 14 for the sea folk. And your fellow crewmates have a four. So Thallus, you are certainly going to be first to respond. Um, the sea folk themselves have gotten their legs under them. They seem well balanced and capable and dangerous. Uh, and they're sort of glaring at your, at your fellow crewmen who are standing around, uh, you know, or hanging on to things on the deck, drenched and unsteady. And what do you do up there in the, in the rigging? As I am the non-talker of the group, I go old school. I am going to hit someone with an arrow and see what happens from there. Oh, nice. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Do me a favor. Get, roll the, make, a, make a dexterity saving throw. And if you do well, then I'll say you can whip your bow out in, no. and have an arrow out in time no. to attack this turn. No. no? Okay. <laughs> that, and, that, that was a that one. A, and followed a, by, if I had advantage, it's still a one. Right. A natural <laughs> Wow. Okay, so a natural one in this case, I'm afraid, means your bow slips out of your hands as you're trying to get everything wrangled entire. And instead of, well, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'll give you a. Ch I'll give you a choice. You either drop the bow, 
or you fall off of the rigging to the deck yourself with the bow still in hand. How much? Oh, uh, how far down <laughs> is it? <laughs> oh, from where you are, you you swung yourself up, so it's probably going to be, uh, you know, I, I mean, I'll give you an acrobatics roll to land, but you're probably a good twenty feet up, right? Yeah. I mean, you were up there messing with the rigging, so uh, you'll either get two d six damage or one d six, depending on how acrobatically you. I'm going to drop the bow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not a bad bad call at first level. Um, all right, so bow goes flying. Uh, and clatters to the deck below, and uh, in the in the, in the endless rain, rain, rain. Uh, the sea folk, the sea folk converge uh, mostly on your uh, your crewmates, right? So, um, if you see any sea folk who don't have anybody in front of them, uh, that's because they're attacking people who don't have figures. In fact, I'll move J J uh, move uh, Jadakira over here to represent crewmen being being harassed, and uh, some of the others are, uh, uh, the, you know, they're basically rushing around, um, aggressively attacking people, and especially they're attacking people who are on ropes and are trying to, uh, you know, trying to keep the ship in in uh, in good trim. Mm. Uh, so this one is running over at the captain. This one is running past them and is going to get opportunity attacks on, on it, but neither of them is equipped with a weapon at this point. So he's going to take his chances. And uh, he's, cause he's, he's, he's rushing at Astartus on the tiller. Um, All right, so yeah, neither one of them does any harm to that brave soul. So they're they're spending their turn, most of them are spending their turn kind of moving into place here. Um, and you hear a couple of cries of alarm or terror or agony as uh, as uh, a couple of your crewmates are getting are getting slashed at or stabbed and uh, desperately clutching for knives at their belts or uh or belaying pins nearby or just turning and running for their lives and uh, baldo you're up all right i uh i just saved this guy so yeah and now he's I, about to get stabbed to death not if i can help it all right calm down friend let's see if we can't talk this over rationally and uh with that I will uh, attempt to skewer him with my rapier. All right. Uh, let's see. How how high up or low down were you on the in the rigging? I swung, I swung down to get him. And, oh, that's uh, right. Yeah. And so I I had not yet made the ascent. Gotcha. So yeah. I'm, no, I'm, that makes sense. So I just step over to the deck and uh, 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 start the attack on this guy. And so if right. I, if I so, on rapier, it should roll for me, yes? Now, uh, yes. However, uh, unless you have, uh, you, you don't have, uh, what do you call it? Um, water vehicle proficiency, right? That was only a Stardust? That's right. Okay, so you're going to be at disadvantage with attack rolls because this deck is just swaying and pitching and slippery and dangerous. All right. I will... I'll take them chances and uh, make the roll at disadvantage. Not bad. Oh, look at that. Not oh, bad right, for then. disadvantage. Yeah. All right, very good. So uh, skewer away. So you can roll your damage. Uh, I think you just do it the same way. Just click the... No, so, that no, was... Uh, roll. Sorry. Uh, all right. Let's try that. And uh, wow, maximum damage. All right. Oh, is that an 11? Yes. Thing to talk. So for now, uh, I'm changing a setting on Baldo for, for later. But okay. for now, just roll a D8 manually. Um, in the menu, there's, a, uh, there's the D20 symbol. If you mouse over that, you can select D8 and then just add a three to that to represent your high. Okay. Difference. All right. 11 points. Ooh, wow. Still 11 points. All right. Yeah, you skewer him like 
right through, I don't know, name somewhere vital and not survivable. Uh, oh, uh, the, uh, through the heart, naturally. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah. And uh, so, so, and you whip your sword out again, and he collapses without a sound, the, the Seafolk Raider does at, <laughs> at your feet and uh, Pataja's and starts sliding in the, in the water, uh, uh, polluting it with his blood. Ugh. Astartus, it is your turn. There's one of these raiders uh, has run up at you uh, with, a, with, a, with, the, with this sort of uh, nasty looking jagged greenish bronze sword and old sword and is coming at you. And you're on the tiller and how do you respond? I would like to go for my weapon. Uh, hazard everyone aboard by going out to meet him. All right. Uh, this is a uh, this is a long sword, right? So yes. uh, if you yeah, I mean if you want to have that on you, I think that's fine. That makes sense. Um, you're already wearing all your heavy heavy armor after all. Yes, uh, compound all of my poor decisions. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> all right. So uh, it looks like it looks like we have an attack roll for you on the map already, which is a. An, 11, well, no, it's a 19, because you have, I'm saying since you have the water vehicle proficiency, you don't take the disadvantage to your attack roll. And then that's a D8, you get plus three for your high strength, is a total of, it's a roll of five, plus three is eight damage, that came up correctly. So you smash into this, into this, uh, this raider and uh, send him recoiling backwards. Uh, you didn't, uh, if you want to describe it, you didn't kill him or do any, you know, like, lock anything off but you've heard him and weakened him and he's and he's not feeling as confident as he was a split second before manages to wheel away but i uh, just slash him across the chest yeah all right so you yeah so your sword smashes into his scaly uh armor and sends him sends him back gasping and uh let's see so the crew turns and starts uh, fighting back. Yes. And there, uh, let's see, Pataja, he, uh, uh, this, this fellow is, is uh, floating away and, and no more. So Pataja, uh, Ebaldo Pataja reaches over and claps you on the shoulder, thankfully, and says, that's two! And then uh, pulls, his, uh, pulls his knife out and inspired to courage uh, rushes over at at uh, at one of these guys that's near him. Nicely so, done. So the so they're they're kind of in a you've basically got sort of two, a, a big a big swirling sprawl of a fight at the aft of the ship. Aft is front, isn't it, or is it bow? Bow is front. At the at the bow of the ship, and then um, and then uh, a smaller like a few single fights going on at the stern. Uh, all right, and key in the water. You're yeah. sinking. Yeah, it sucks. You're sinking. I'm really good at it. You're really, really good at sinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Been training for this your whole life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I will. I will have many details for you in a moment. So bear with us, Thalus. You're up again. I want to do something a little crazy. Okay. Can I use a rope rigging to lasso one of them and basically go down as that one goes up to slam into the top of the uh, the rigging up there as I grab my bow to go back up and it goes down? Yeah, I think that might work. Uh, do you have any proficiencies that especially speak to being really good with rope stuff? Of course not, um, unless you okay. count survival. Yeah, I don't think survival would work for this, but you can just call it a dexterity roll, like just, just using your stat modifier on a d20. So I just need to roll a 20 or somehow? Yeah, if you uh, look to the, the, the tool menu, it usually starts off on the left of the screen, but you can move it around. But gotcha. there's a little die symbol, d20 symbol, and then just select uh, mouse over the d20. Whoops. Uh, I didn't mean to roll two. But it's well, that's 18. okay. The first, yeah, the first one is an eighteen. Yeah, an eighteen is an awesome roll. All right, and you get like a plus three anyway for your, yeah, or a plus for your crazy dexterity. So, uh, so there you go. Okay, which one of these? Uh, pick one of one of the two this one nearest here. you to do that to. I basically want to uh, rope him as we go down to grab the bow to come back up, slam him, and slam him, and be back up top if possible. All, all right. So uh, to to indicate things, 
on the map, by the way, yeah, you hold, like click and hold, and that'll cause a little radar symbol to come out, and that'll that's how you indicate things. So like, All right, very good. Uh, so 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 you send him flying upward, and then you can move yourself to uh, in his place there near uh, Jadakira, and uh, and the, the the raider is is like dangling in the rigging now, kind of <laughs> writhing and all tangled up. Yeah, that's badass. That's very cool. Uh, all right. So the sea folk, uh, he that one is certainly going to be busy writhing. Uh, this one that Astarta smashed has thought better of this whole endeavor and goes diving off the rail, off the uh, off the deck into the sea. Uh, the one that was attacking Captain Helion is uh, still attacking her, but she's she's a little more resilient than he expected, so she hasn't gone down yet. And then this fight over here is uh, is still going on. You've had one of your you know, one of your one of your crewmates has gone down, stabbed by a couple of these things, uh, these raiders, and um, Baldo, you can respond. You can react now. All right. As much as I want to go and to the back of the boat, it really makes more sense for me to be up here at the front. So I am going to move to here and uh, and attack as before. So you rush up on one of the raiders that's uh, in the middle of trying to stab one of another of your crewmates to death, and, and go for it. All right. Um, all right. Disadvantage again, I'm afraid. Oh, sorry. Let's oh, see. I don't. Oh, I don't. Never mind. I don't need to. Uh, I can do. Uh, oh, you just rolled a, a six, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, hold on. I can. Uh, I can roll w with the rapier. Uh, well, I'll just make a second roll. Yeah, uh, that's fine. You can remember you attack at plus five. So, All right, so you have to keep the six, <laughs> yeah, the which six. is oh boy, which is a lowly eleven. And let's see, armor class is twelve, so just good enough for his Ugh. his uh, leathery uh, scales to turn the the worst of your blade. Mm. And uh, Astartus, how about you? Your 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 attacker has retreated and dove over the uh, over the side. Oh, you know what? I forgot since he ran away from, well, now because he would have disengaged from you and then jumped over. So your, your attacker has do, do, uh, dived over the side in flight, and you're at the tiller. The captain is, is fighting one of these raiders just ahead of you, and then further down the ship are other, uh, other battles happening. I will think about Key for a moment and then realize that we can probably help her if... She's still alive more easily if the ship is actually secure. So I will go to the aid of the captain. All right. Uh, so yeah, you can get close enough and and have at the raider that she's been that she's been fighting. All right. So that'll need an a tech roll. And let's see. Uh, Key, are you there? Do you want to do you want to um, uh, try an, an attack roll for a Stardust? Yes. Kill steal the captain. All right. Uh, Seventeen will hit, and that's. Yeah, I think that's going to take that one down because he's already been fighting and probably is already a little worn by fighting with Captain Helium. So that one goes too. Uh, this one, that one down entirely. Astartes, you want to describe how you uh, cleave him in twain or whatnot? They are very much engaged in a contest of wills and honorable clash that I end by stabbing him in the back. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, and let's see. The crew are still fighting and fighting. Some of them running and running and hiding. And, uh, and Key is still sinking. And uh, as, you're, as you're sinking Key, uh, it's, a, it's a strange thing. You're, you're, um, you're sort of, you're holding your breath and you're at the last, it feels like you're at the last, you know, you're starting to feel blackness come in around you and your lungs are burning and and about to burst, you know, and you can just tell this is it. And then, and then there's this strangest sense of, uh, of kind of lightness at, that surrounds you as the water, uh, the water that's pulling you down seems to grow. I don't know, not necessarily warmer, but not as as bitter. Mm -hmm. And and then at the top of the turn is uh, Thalos again. Are we, are we pronouncing that right? Yes. Okay, it's your turn. 
Uh, I want to grab my bow and shoot. Wow, this is a, a bad spot to be in. Um, can I shoot the one that's beside Baldo? Uh, yeah, you'll be rolling with disadvantage because of the horrible weather and the pitching of the ship and everything. Um, and just don't roll a natural one for your attack and be safe. <laughs> I, I have always liked you. <laughs> Let's find out how much right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, it's not a natural one. Natural two, so you came close, but not uh, a natural one. All right. So, Baldo, yeah, it's like this arrow goes wishing past your ear, you know, and you can you can tell one of your one of your soaking wet hairs Duck! has been severed by it. And uh all right. So uh Baldo this over uh, my shoulder I screamed, this is because I'd used the rope trick, wasn't it? And <laughs> attack this guy again. All right. Well he's gonna get a he's gonna have at you first. Oh and he so can. He, he is yep going a 13. What is your armor class? 14. Oh, wow. Okay, so you just barely avoid his 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 blade inste in the, instead. Yeah, not so great when it's on the other end, is it? Yeah. Ish boy. Yeah. And uh, who else needs to get? Uh, some, of the, some of the NPCs are still fighting, fighting, fighting. Uh, okay, so that's it. So, Valdo, it's your turn. All right. Uh, let's try this rapier attack again and see if I can't mm -hmm. do any better with it a uh, second time. Yeah, that'll uh, work. Yeah, fourteen. That'll and that'll that'll do it. Okay, so you you can describe for us. You, you don't you don't lay him low, but you hurt him. How, um, does, that, how does that look? Uh, the I plunge the rapier uh, in at the top of his shoulder where the major muscles are from the arm that he used to swing at me with his weapon. Mm. That's for you. All right, so he kind of hisses at you with this grimace of angry pain and uh, his uh, around his his jagged greenish teeth. Uh, let's see, Astartus, you're uh, you've killed the fighter, the 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 raider that was fighting with Captain Helian. Uh, she uh, kind of she kind of nods and looks around and hurries to the tiller to uh, to grab it and keep the the ship where it's supposed to try to get the ship into some kind of control. It's increasingly uh, turbulent. And, um, and what do you do? You've got, you've got no enemies immediately around you, uh, but there are, there's, there's one hanging up in the rigging trying to escape. In fact, let me give, let me give him a belated dexterity roll. Yeah, that'll, that'll bring him down. So there's one on the, on the deck near the mast and then beyond that is a big There's, scrum of fighting. Did, did he take some damage? Sorry. Coming down? Uh, yeah. You know what? I'll give him a I'll give him a follow up roll for that. Sure. Yeah. I'll do I'll do. Uh, Bump. <laughs> do that. All right. Yeah. He hit the he hit the the deck pretty hard and is kind of coming up staggered. Yeah. That's a good call. <laughs> I guess All I right. will rush. Oh, sorry. I guess I will Go. rush him. Okay. Rush at that guy. Yeah. Let's see. You have, I think you have, uh, where's my measuring tool? Here it is. All right. Yeah, just you that, can, you can, just... you can barrel, you, you sort of barrel past Thallus and slam into this raider. So make your, you can make your attack roll a Stardus. Uh, Key, you can make that, hit that if you like. That's going to be an 11, which is not enough to hit him. So your sword, like, Swing. He ducks just at the last instant, and your sword smacks into the wood of the of the mast next to him. And um, let's see. Top of the turn is Thallus now. Astartes just shoved past you, howling after that raider. I think he has that one. I'm going to try to help out Baldo and take another box shot. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, <laughs> you you don't you don't skewer the raider or a baldo either one this time. I'm just warming and, up. And uh, uh, let's see the uh, the sea folk at this point. All of a sudden, they kind of it's it's like it's almost like their ears perk up. You know, they don't literally, but but they all kind of look up or sniff the air, and each of them with backs away. And backs away from whoever they're fighting, 
and runs and dives off Ooh. the side of the ship. In game terms, that's using their action to disengage. Yes. So they don't get attacks of opportunity. And then, then they move. And within a moment, um, there are no enemies in sight. All of them immediately, instantly, of course, vanish into the waves. You've just got, um, you just got uh, sort of uh, 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 blood um, in the seawater, rapidly being cleaned from the deck by the action of waves and rain. And and as and as you are starting to catch your breath. Well, uh, you tell me, how are, how are each of you responding? Thalys, how, how do you respond to that strange turn? Going to grab an arrow and rope and running to the side of the boat where our companion fell off to look for them to see if we can spear them back up. You, <laughs> see, no, you see no sign of key whatsoever. It's just, it's just, you know, wherever she fell off was back that away, surely a long distance. It's just turbulent waves and foam. Uh, let's see, Baldo, what about you? I, uh, I wiped the uh, blade off on uh, one of the skittering corpses sliding mm -hmm. over the edge of the rail and turn around and clap my hands and say, well, that was invigorating. Who we lose? <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, one of your crewmate, crewmates kind of looks at you with a... With a with the, the, the kind of hatred that only somebody who's been recently stabbed could, could summon. <laughs> and uh, Astartus, what about you? You're sort of in the middle of the ship now next to the mast. Your, your opponent has, has fled and jumped over the side again. And it seems like, it seems like all enemies are gone. I will move to fetch my shield and I am scanning the skies surely that I will soon catch sight of some sort of storm god throwing lightning at us. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, let's see, and, uh, and Key, alas, I'll, I'll tell you in a moment what's up with you. Um, so one of, your, one of your crewmates overhead, after everybody has been kind of catching their, catching their breath and, and seeing how bad the damage is, uh, one of the crewmates that was up in the up at the, 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 the heights of the mast on lookout who decided not to come down and get stabbed by anybody. Um, suddenly you, you, hear, you hear her voice uh, shouting out, almost screaming out, uh, uh, Shoals, land, coming hard. Oh no. All right. And uh, Harry and Captain Harry and starts shouting orders at everybody to uh, you know remind you of your duty as she tries to bring the bring the ship around and uh, I'd like to ascend back up into the rigging and mm -hmm. uh, hold on for dear life. All right. Uh, so uh, so as you do that, another couple of the guys do that as well, and you hear uh, you hear you hear Rusa, uh, her lieutenant down below, shout up at you. Get on those ropes! Get on those ropes! Ho! Ho! All right. Um, I've got acrobatics. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to use, uh, take an acrobatics check to shore up the lines and uh, make sure that the, uh, that everything is moving so that they can steer and hopefully get us away from the uh, reef. Okay. Yeah. Give it a shot. Do I need it at disadvantage if I'm in the rigging? No, this is just a straight roll. I mean, if you have inspiration, you can use it for advantage, but it's, it's um, not at disadvantage now by on its own. I'm going to save that inspiration roll. I have a feeling it's going to come in really handy later. Okay. Hey, oh look God. at that. <laughs> a natural 20. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so Baldo, uh, you take the opportunity here to tell us all what that looks like. All right. Uh, from his position on the, uh, on the main, uh, on the mast, uh, you see Baldo plucking at these ropes like the strings of a harp, uh, moving the lines, uh, kicking the block and tackle and or block and pulley out of the way uh, to make sure that everything is, is operating smoothly and uh, even uh, using the weight of his own body to uh, trim the sails uh, 
by swinging down and then looping back around like a gymnast. All right. All right. Very good. Uh, let's see. Uh, Astartus, uh, what, what's, what's, what's your job here and how do, you, how do you do it to save the ship as it seems to be threatening to crash into, into land? I will rush over to the tiller and help steady it and keep the ship on course. Right, okay. Uh, let's see, give it, give, roll, um, this will be, this will be equivalent to an athletics check if you're proficient in athletics, which I think you are, but it's a water vehicles check using your strength, right? All right. So that's going to be uh, 12, was, was this with inspiration or just a straight roll? Uh, this was just a straight roll. I guess I will use the inspiration because I don't want us to lose our ship. Right. Well, do you, if you, I'm just saying, if you had inspiration still and you wanted to use it on this, you could, I or will. you can save it. Okay. So in that case, yeah. So you, uh, you, you, you and uh, Harry and together, like haul on the tiller and keep it, keep it intact. Only giving it enough, enough, uh, enough way to keep the the wood from snapping on the pressures of the waves. But it it helps to uh, it helps to 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 keep the ship turning on. Uh, as it as it's supposed to, and uh, Thallus, what about you? What's what's your role here? Want to try to get back up into the rigging and actually shout out orders about what we should be trying to avoid using more sort of a perception based to avoid some of the rocks and everything else if I can. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, go for it. All right, and sixteen is a sixteen's a good roll. So the. Um, so as you're calling out warnings, you know, at the last second, as they start to, to, to uh, you know, as they're bringing the ship around, you, you, you point out a, uh, uh, you kind of call out a warning that they need to ease off the turn because there's another patch of shoals coming up to starboard. And so as the ship kind of thunders through, you uh, pass that, uh, that danger, you can see this, this looming enormous shape uh, ahead of you coming through the the mist and waves and and there's this kind of uh, thunderous uh, it feels sound it feels thunderous in your in your in the soles of your feet sound of uh, of wood kind of crashing and grinding off of the off of the uh, the shoals below as the the captain and Astartes. Uh, try to wrestle it, and the rest of you on the in the rigging and on the sails. Try to wrestle it free, and meanwhile, Key, yeah. you uh, you come awake in the strangest place. You see immediately you're not alone. There are three of the sailors from the uh, from the ship are near you, but you're you're all three kind of sitting, hovering uh, at what you can only assume is the seabed because you're surrounded by water and yet as you breathe, you, the water kind of moves in and out of your lungs like air. And the, uh, the three sailors that you're with are kind of, uh, they're, they, they're looking around in terror and uh, you can tell in the it's it's very dim. It's kind of this uh, this um, this this dim dark twilight uh, in the not too, in the in, in the in the near distance. You suddenly see this strange huge uh, shape swim into view and then and then away uh, before you can really get a a good look at it and standing or sort of floating near the seabed um, maybe I mean not very far away maybe I don't know 30 or 50 yards probably but it's very hard to gauge distances here uh, you see a couple of the uh, people that look like those raiders that you saw come aboard the ship uh, watching you and in the it, further in the distance there's this faint glow of a uh, what looks like a, um, a kind of an ornate tower of some kind that, that has this kind of uh, greenish blue phosphorescence about it. 
Are either the other sailors or any of them uh, hurt? Uh, it doesn't look like it. No, they're they're just uh, you know the the they presumably got washed over at the same time you did. Uh, in fact, they'll say so. You know that they, uh, um, you know, uh, Taraj Taraj is one of the the most outspoken of them, and he kind of he says, "Oh no, we went over, and every one of us is you're the last of us to to wake up here." But we've no idea what's what's happening or what those things want with us or or how we can even talk or breathe. What kind of what kind of strange magic is this? All right, I'm going to say a quick and silent prayer to Sahayek, uh, because All right. this is odd, mm-hmm. and I'm grateful not to be dead, and or maybe I am dead, and at the bottom of like the afterlife or something. But I'm gonna go with I'm not dead, and right. I'll try okay. to I'll try to like wave at one of them to communicate with them. Okay, uh, the one you wave at. Uh, sees you and uh, kind of takes a step forward and you can do you, are you proficient with insight the skill yes yeah you can tell he takes a step forward you can't really see features very well but you can tell just uh, body language he looks aggressive and hostile and another one of the guards nearby kind of makes a gesture saying something that you can't hear and um, and uh, um, and the first one kind of shakes his head and his hair kind of swirls in the sea currents and takes another step back as if to ignore you. I don't think they like us. So your, your companions sort of nod and shiver. And after a moment, you see a few more figures coming from the direction of that strange tower and they uh as they're approaching one of them is is this uh that they sort of come floating half walking half swimming to the the bottom of the sea and they're led by an elderly man you assume uh you assume some kind of a priest or noble these ornate robes that billow about him and he has this uh this sort of what looks like a crown of uh of bright coral resting in a bronze circlet on his head and then there's a uh, 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 his companion that's coming with him is younger uh, uh, fierce looking uh, woman who's dressed like the other raiders in armor and with a, with a, uh, a stabbing sword at her uh, at her side and the, they stop near enough that you can hear and converse um, but not not near enough that you can rush up at them, you know. Ten yards, maybe, is the closest they get. And uh, the two of them kind of look at each other and converse for a moment in a uh, language you probably don't understand. What languages do you understand? Probably, if there's a language in Iskatai, that in common. Right, right, okay. So yeah, they they kind of converse between themselves and in this this sort of strange uh, flowing tongue that that you don't recognize. And uh, and meanwhile, a few of the others that are near them uh, contribute. There seems to be a, an argument or a or a debate going on. The, the the old priest that looks at you and your companions appraisingly. And uh, and so after a moment, he steps forward and says, and addresses the, the four of you, and says, uh, says, my name is Velthor. I am the high priest of, of our folk who've been cursed to live beneath the waves in the, in the shadow of the sea demon. And you and your, your vessel have intruded here Many of my people think that you should be killed out of hand. What do you say for yourself? We did not mean to cause any offense. We didn't know you were here and would have made the proper greetings if we had known and gotten your permission to cross through here. So he looks at the others and uh, the, the younger one, the woman who's with him, 
she uh, she says uh, she steps forward and with with uh, with Velda and says uh, that's that that sounds that sounds like what any any terrified air breather would say. What 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 proof do you have that that, uh, that uh, what are you even doing here? We were searching for something, right? Uh, yeah, out of character. Your 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 actual goal is to find the temple of the sea demon and loot it for all it's worth. All right, I will hold up uh, my amulet and say I am a priest as well. I hope that uh, that you understand that I represent the Sahay- Hayek and would not uh, give offense to his name by lying to you about this matter. We were here to find the Sea Demon's temple, but as I said, we didn't know there was anyone living here. So the, the sea folk kind of look at each other and with, uh, with dark, kind of give each other dark looks and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Velther the priest says, what, you say you sought the temple of the sea demon. What do you know of what do you know of the of the sea demon? Just that these are dangerous waters, and we were warned against coming here. So he he starts um, he kind of takes a breath and intones this uh, the, this sort of chants this poem that uh, when translated, what he trances. In the twilight days, before dying eyes looked to heaven, the proud storm lord flew too near the abyssal deeps, where covetous Tiamat, queen of the chaos ocean, seized his thunderous glory, dragged him to her lifeless lair, and begat of him the nameless, the cruel lurker, the blood hungry, that mortals call the sea demon, and the sea folk all kind of you know make uh what you can only assume to be holy gestures or warding gestures of some kind ritually in front of them he I'll says. copy the gesture so uh he says uh that that is the nature of what you seek is that what you wish to find yes so the uh so they kind of uh you know Talk them, uh, uh, you know, between each other, banter uh, uh, a few minutes more, and then, uh, and then he says, he says, why? We've heard of uh, a boundless amount of treasure and knowledge hidden there that we wish to wish to see for ourselves. So the um, uh, the 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 fierce woman with him kind of nods and gives him, you know, starts, starts giving him a, a lecture that you don't need to understand their language to know is something along the lines of, I told you so. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he's, he kind of, there's, there's more argument. And he, uh, he says, uh, so, so uh, the, and the woman, the woman finally, uh, finally, Call, shouts out to you. It doesn't shout, but she she calls. She she sort of makes a gesture to shush everyone, and and she says, uh, "We will let we will let the four of you let the four of you go back to the the nearest dry land. You can go to the island of the sea demon, but we require an oath of you first, and it's an oath that land dwellers like you may not may not wish to give." Uh, what oath is that? To quell the wrath of the sea demon, you must leave a sacrifice behind. One of your own people. Oh, boy. I see. Your, uh, your, 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 Taraj, your, your companion, kind of, you know, he kind of, he kind of mutters over to you through the water. He says, uh, well, t- tell her, of course we'll do it, of course we'll do it. What will happen to them when we leave them behind? She says, how you make the sacrifices of no concern to me, but it must be blood and it must be death. Only that will quiet the wrath of the demon. You mentioned that you were cursed to live here. 
the, the, the old priest says, nods his head, and his hair kind of, you know, shifts around, shifts in the water around his crown, and his enormous long mustache floats, and he says, he says, long ago. Is there a way to break that curse as well? There is not. We fought, we sought it. Our forefathers sought it. Their mothers before them sought it. There is no, there is no way to break the curse that that falls on us. I will make the oath. All right. Uh, uh, okay, say it. How do you how do you say it? I will hold my amulet uh, in front of me and say, "On the name of Sahayek, I swear to you that I will not leave." the realm of the sea demon without leaving a sacrifice of blood and death. All right, so they kind of look at each other and give wary nods and uh, and they kind of mutter between themselves for a moment and uh, and then they uh, and then the priest says says uh, very well. Then we release you and remember this oath. For your God surely will. And he like lifts this this long driftwood looking uh, uh, rod and the waves around, the, the, the currents around you suddenly shift and push you and your three companions um, away from them and up into the, into the, uh, into the sea. Um, okay, so key. Um, do you did you have inspiration coming in here? Or did you already lose it or use it? I mean, I have not used it. Okay, you lose it now, on account of making an oath to kill one of your crewmates or friends. Fair. And the waves wash the four of you up onto this strange beach. You're all, of course, soaking wet, and you wouldn't have been able to swim this far if you'd wanted to, but the, but the waves kind of push you up from the depths onto the shore. And as you come up, um, you see, not far away, the Heart of Iron is anchored, and some of the crew are, uh, are working, repairing damage to the hull that you know, that, uh, that, that could have sunk the thing and, and been absolutely disastrous if it weren't so skillfully handled approaching the shoals and the island. Um, and to the, uh, and, and inland on this, uh, past the shore, you see, um, you see this, this twisted tower comes up out of the, out of the ground looming overhead it looks like it looks like uh, uh, an enormous shard of of living coral jutting into the sky like a like a jagged splinter in the flesh of a god and the rest of you on the crew uh doing your work or not doing your work depending on your proclivities uh you know whoever uh, some of you see he and the th some three of the other missing crewmen come staggering up out of the water. All right. I think I'll just lie down on the beach. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shout out that I've seen them. Yeah. Yeah. People turn and call out in surprise and, uh, and run over to see what's, what has happened and where in the world did you come from? How did you survive? Laziest undead dwarf I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're alive. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll join the uh, group of people uh, uh, rushing to give them aid. And uh, as, uh, as, as Key is laying there on the beach, gasping for real air, uh, mm -hmm. I will uh, lean down and say to her, it's a good thing you're back. I haven't figured out how to pick the lock on your strong box yet. No, stay out of there. I, I look... I just wanted to make sure that the necklace went to the right person. That's all. I'm, just, I'm, I'm trying to help you. 
Welcome back, by the way. Where, where were you when the fight broke out? You know, we had, we were up to our eyeballs in these creepy gill man things. Uh, I turn around, you're gone. And now you're coming up from the water. Yeah, yeah. I was busy drowning. Well, you apparently did a piss poor job of it because you <laughs> appeared to be fully formed. Yeah. Um, I think that's more of a, a conversation that we shouldn't have in front of everyone. Well, have some wine. Then we'll have the conversation in front of everyone. <laughs> I like the cut of your jib. Okay, so now that we are four again, uh, let's, uh, let's go check in with the captain. Yeah, there's a, there, there are a couple of fires on the beach. Um, you know, there's, there was damaged wood from the hull that had to be taken off and has now been repurposed to, uh, to, to help people dry out and, and warm themselves from the worst of their experiences. And uh, so she, uh, yeah, she greets you, you know, and leads you to one of the fires for your, your water, waterlogged friends to, uh, to sit and, and try to recover. And uh, so, so Key, what do you, what do you, what do you, and your, the other three that were with you, Taraj and the other two are, are, uh, they're kind of taking their cues from you because they're a little daunted by all the strange things that happened. Um, so uh, people are obviously very curious what happened to you down there and what do you tell them, if anything? Have you ever heard of the sea people that were on the ship before? Well, the captain sort of shrugs and says, uh, I would have said they were a myth, but but for those that uh, that attacked us. They uh, live under the sea, and uh, they wanted a word. A word? What does that mean? Uh, they said they attacked since we were trespassing, basically, and wanted to know our intentions. Hmm. Right, they have a funny way of asking. <laughs> Indeed. Well, what did you tell them? I told them we were here to admire the knowledge and treasure hidden uh, in the, with the sea demon, who they seem to uh, be very afraid of, by the way. Ooh. She kind of nods. Uh, so let's see. Thallus, Astartus, <clears throat> and Baldo. Yes. Do, are, are any of you proficient with insight? I have... Uh... Or I guess you can tell me, what is your insight bonus? Uh, plus two. five. Yeah, see, that was two for Thallus, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and Astartes. Popping one. Okay. Uh, so, so Baldo, this really only applies to you unless okay. you kind of, you know, uh, give let by gestures and nods the the others know something about it but okay you can tell that like a couple of one of keys com a couple of keys companions that came up from the deeps with her are uh keeping you know one of them seems perfectly natural two of the others are sort of keeping carefully blank and another the fourth looks uh very uncomfortable about the story that she's saying or something about how she's saying it okay I'll make a note of that and let her finish the tale before uh, I uh, make any action. I want to. I want to see where this this story goes first. Sure. All right. So. Uh, so yeah. So Keith, uh, the, the the captain, the captain says, "Well, but they they let you go. Then is that right? What what? How did all this end?" Well, luckily, we were talking to a priest, so he understood where I was coming from um, and trusted my word that we did not uh, intentionally intrude on their, on their territory. They recommended we not visit this temple, though, and that if we did, we'd see more loss than we expect. She kind of nods thoughtfully and um, gets out of... Gets out a pipe, you know. Get picks a a, a a little a burning um, shard of wood out of the fire and lights uh, lights up the herbs in in her long pipe and starts uh, puffing and 
looks at uh, looks at Key, uh, Thallus, Astartes, and Baldo, and says, "Well then, what do you say? The, the four of you were planning you think, planning to uh, to make this to make this venture." I see no reason to alter our plans. We're not dead yet. I stand silent and awkwardly. I um. What? Wait. <laughs> Never mind. I stand up and say, yes, as far as I'm concerned, we can leave on the morrow. But come, you all look famished. I grab the guy that uh, had the uncomfortable look on his face. Oh, no. And pull him to his feet and say, come, my friend, let's get you something to drink. And I am going to let you talk to my friend Pataja, and he can tell you what a wonderful rescue I made of him. And I lead him away to another fire. Oh, oh, oh uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, of course, of course. And as we reach the midpoint between the fires, I say, you seem a, mit, a mite uncomfortable. Mind telling me what's on your mind, friend? Oh, no, it, it's, it's just, it's, it's, been a, it's been a fright. It's just, uh, this, we came from a, from a land of, of from a, a, a land. It's not even land, it's, it's at the bottom of the ocean, a realm of, of cursed, cursed people. It's wholly unnatural. All, all, of, all of us are shaken. Yes, you seem, you seem rather shaken, but I get the impression that there's something she's not telling us. What say you unburden your soul to me? Hmm? And I'm going to try using perception or persuasion on him. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. And I will use uh, my inspiration for this. Okay. Oh, well, there you go. Well, all right. So he uh, he kind of you know uh, between you and uh, ha have you actually guided him over to Pataja? Yeah, I'm gonna I, as I'm gonna okay. walk him over to Pataja and and uh, see that he's got a flagon of wine and mm -hmm. whatever pig we've killed. Uh, mm -hmm. and on the beach, and I uh, entreat Pataja to regale him with tales to bolster his courage. Sure, yeah. Well, no, no pigs on the beach, but you have, you know, you, you had some at the, uh, in the hold. Salted uh, fish or whatnot, right. yes. Right. And uh, so, so, so you're, uh, so, uh, um, so uh, Ferenis, who's, who's the, the uncomfortable sailor, he, uh, he kind of, he, he, he drinks and and uh, eats and says, uh, says that's. Uh, it was, it was, it was. Uh, I tell you, it was, it was frightful down there, and they, they extracted a, they extracted a terrible, terrible promise for us. We're all going to be cursed and doomed now if we don't watch what we're doing. What sort of promise? He 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 looks around to make sure nobody else is listening, and and leans in and and whispers. Uh, sort of fearfully whispers a sacrifice to the demon mm. sacrifice to the demon eh uh some uh some animal burnt offerings perhaps he kind of shakes his head with this appalled look on his face oh one of those sacrifices well yes. heathen gods strange magic sea creatures from the deep come on Enough of that talk. Let's let's get you good and snockered. Hmm? And he, I'll he kind, uh, of, he kind of nods and says, I, "I think that's a good idea." Yeah, I'll uh, I'll I'll f finish half of a uh, uh, of a drought with him, and then wander back to the uh, to the campsite where everybody else is, mm -hmm. and sit down and say, "Well, I've got him squared away." Can I roll so, <laughs> to see if I know that he knows? Yeah, yeah. Give it. A, give make an insight roll because <laughs> uh, you you certainly can be. Yeah, you can. You <laughs> could have been paying attention. You may have been paying close attention to their, even without hearing it, to sort of the mood of their discussion over there. Uh, this is a normal roll, so it's an eleven. You know, I'm gonna say you've got a good wisdom. I'm gonna say you have a pretty strong suspicion. Because you know that this dude was not comfortable about the, uh, you know, the whole human sacrifice thing. And he looks somehow um, uh, less burdened 
now that he's returned with with uh, Baldo and the others. Fortunately, that? that might just make him look like a, he's already a human sacrifice just walking around. <laughs> <laughs> Was the plan for everyone to go into the temple or for just the four of us? Oh, just the four of us, I'm afraid. All right. Well, it, it, I, should, I should say, I mean, that's kind of up to the four of you. Um, it wasn't like you're the only ones permitted. But as far as you know, none of the other sailors wanted to go uh, looking for a, you know, demon temple and get exposed <laughs> to whatever horribleness is in there. I'll frown and say, uh, Baldo, Thalys, Astartes, could I have another word in private? Oh, what, what, whatever could this be about? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, Key. Captain, if you'll excuse us, no doubt we're working out the marching order for tomorrow. <laughs> I'll sit awfully close to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> All right, we'll, yeah. we'll move to an unoccupied area of the beach. Well, sure. The floor is yours, Key. I see you're checking up on me, Baldo. I would never presume to think that you needed checking up on. On the other hand, that guy looked like he was about to swallow his tongue. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, we got the lay of the land. And he told me nothing but stories of your skillful debate i was rather impressed i thought uh i thought you didn't have it in you but you managed to talk your way out of it and get back to shore well done key well done well i'm good at talking to religious people but i'm i'm not so <laughs> i don't envy the position that you were in one bit on the other hand i did get to finally use my rapier uh on a fishy guy so I'd say all in all, it was a pretty good day. You were saying something, Key? I didn't want to talk about this in front of everyone, but I did sort of have to make a promise in order for the priest to let us leave a uh, an oath to Sahayek. Wait a minute. Uh, I, I look and see if there are any gills. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't see any gills yet. No, Innsmouth look. What kind of oath? So... They really hate the sea demon. And they say he'll only be appeased from being disturbed by death and blood. And so I have to leave those things behind. What? No. Say it isn't so. It's Says Baldo very unconvincingly. Yes. I was going to tell you. I was just trying to figure out the right way to put it. I... Don't I think it, it would have been a, a knife in the ribs of one of us who was asleep. Oh, come now. We've, we've shared all these weeks on the open sea. Perish the thought. On the other hand, there have been a couple of crewmen who have refused to pull their weight, and one of whom keeps consistently cheating me at cards. So I say we bring a few of them with us. We need porters to haul things back. Exactly. That's dark. Well, from the developer of Delta Green. What? <laughs> Look, accidents happen all the time. I mean, we are going into a demon temple, you know? Surely there's all manner of pitfalls, sharp rocks. You could fall on a knife 17 times. It could happen. To be fair, I did not promise to exactly kill anyone, just that there would be blood and death. So hopefully there'll be something there to kill. Well, here's hoping that uh, the demon uh, doesn't recognize a loophole when he hears it. How does the Hayek feel about loopholes? <laughs> yeah, I mean, in in your experience as a priest, and then as a as a priest of of Sahayak, I mean that that you 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 know rites and rituals to pray to many many gods. Very few priests in in this world are um, dedicated to just one deity, right? Mm -hmm. So. So Sahayek is your is sort of the 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 one that you uh, commune with the most, pray to the most, so to speak, uh, study his ways the most. But uh, but you know you know especially if you're trained in religion, you know lots about lots of gods. And as far as you know, there's never there's never been one that would uh, that anyone that any priest would say, ah, well, you caught us. 
I'll let you <laughs> off the hook this time. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess I'm stuck. <laughs> They're like the IRS that way. <laughs> right. It's just a little bit of money laundering. What? Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that uh, we should absolutely kill one of the other sailors, uh, but you have a list. Well, I it, it's it's a short list, but yes, I have a list. I mean, Pataja has been nothing but good to me this whole uh this whole trip this whole voyage uh and now he owes me a couple that said he would not be the first hit on the chopping block if i were in charge well i have sworn to the captain that we are going to fulfill this mission and so we're bringing back loot from the sea demon's temple and if that requires losing one of them the sort of shrugging toward the campfire of shirkers that i'm sure is nearby i don't mind let's uh let me talk to pataja in the morning and see if he will uh, help me rally the crew we'll call for volunteers if we get three or four great all right uh baldo uh, speaking out of character right and everybody else pretend you're not listening but uh speaking out of character how uh how how genuine are you in this scheme to recruit a crewman to go down and be murdered? I am not. I, if I if there's any other way to do it, I will. I, I'm I'm currently actively working on finding that loophole. Uh, so if 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 we can do it by trickery, awesome. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so I'm so I'm that... not. I, I'm I'm only interested in so far as getting us moving. Uh, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to go against any of the party members, but, uh, if, if there's another way to fix this, and I suspect one of the ways to fix it might be to just, uh, kill the demon. If we can, if we can do that, if we can kill the demon, then we don't have to worry about a sacrifice because, mm -hmm. you know, dead demons don't eat, uh, you know, so, uh, right. so I, All while right. I'm, it's, 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 a, it's a hollow uh, brag. That gotcha. I, that okay. I, yeah. The the whole thing ought to be making certainly Baldo and uh, Thalus kind of instinctively uncomfortable. Yeah. I think my lack of saying anything should convey that. <laughs> all right. All right. So um, you know, looking around, it's 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 getting it's getting very dark. Uh, luckily, you just came through a great storm, so the skies are clear, but um but uh but looking around the island you know you, it's 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 a very strange place you're on uh, there doesn't seem to be anything growing that you would expect i mean there's no shrubs it, it's as if you're kind of walking on on a on a, on some immense coral reef the the surface of which has been smoothed over somewhat by the elements over time and ground to a semblance of, uh, of of sand and and there is some sand there's a beach you know there's sand that's washed up from the sea hmm. but the further you go inland you know it, it all kind of converges on this 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 great kind of crooked spire of of uh, of coral jutting up into the sky the other three that were down there with me heard me make the oath so I don't think mm -hmm. if we ask for people to join us, it's going to remain a secret. So I think we should be up front that one person will not be coming back. Or there is at least a likelihood of that. It's better that everyone knows the risks going in. Well, not lying is a way to go, sure. I just think it's better not to lose the goodwill of the entire crew when we still will have to sail back. Why don't we All just right. tell the captain and she can order some people to come with us? Well, there is that, but it would still get out. And if it gets out, then the crew could turn on the captain. I think maybe volunteering may be our best bet. Ask for people to accompany us, accompany us and uh, make it, uh, I guess we could tell them why we want them to come. I mean, and maybe, maybe we won't get anybody, but at least we can ask. And we can offer them a larger share of the loot. Maybe Perhaps. we can offer to that they uh, simply draw lots. We all draw lots. We have someone who's very good at sleight of hand. Yeah, I'm. I if 
I'll say right now, if we draw lots, I'm cheating. <laughs> it circumvents the problem. It just creates a moral problem. <laughs> it does. How about this? Uh, I know a couple of you uh, got beat up uh, on the deck. Uh, what say we sleep on it? And at first light, we'll make a decision and uh, go uh, investigate while we've got light. It seems like a safer bet. Agreed? Agreed. Yes. All right. right. Maybe the sea demon will show up and murder us in our sleep. That would solve a couple of problems. It would now, wouldn't it? All right. Uh, I'm going to retire to the ship and sleep on the deck. Okay. Uh, what about the rest of you? I mean, as thing as it gets darker, you know, people are kind of setting up, setting up camps, uh, and uh, uh, most most people are trying to stay near the fire and keep at least a, a sort of a uh, <laughs> not not cursory, but sort of you know a a thin fire going, if nothing else. They probably you probably don't have enough wood for anything uh, that the captain's willing to spare for for blazing lights throughout the night. I've uh, uh, I've gotten used to sleeping on the boat, so. I'm sure. Going. All right. What about what about the uh, what about the rest of you? I'll sleep on the deck, surrounded by weapons. <laughs> <laughs> I am very excited to be back on land, and I will stay there as long as possible. I'll get okay. You. I'll meditate yes. for my four hours on the shore with the crew. Yeah. All right. And then take up sort of a guard position. Gotcha. So uh, things quiet down. You have only the shore and the, that sort of weird, unsettling island. To, uh, to to keep you company, and it uh, it stays it stays it stays quiet um, through the. Uh, let me see, Th uh, Thalus, as you uh, as you sort of come alert again and start kind of pacing and keeping watch. You know, you can tell that toward the center of the island, there's uh, there seem seems to be a faint, I don't know, ever so faint, maybe glow or phosphorescence that you can just make out in the night uh, when clouds go over the, the thin moon overhead. You know I have to sneak out and take a look at that, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can totally do that. Uh, and in fact, you don't even, I don't think you even need to make a roll at this point because everybody's... Well, I'll put it to you this way. Do you want to sneak out such that the other one or two crewmen who are on watch definitely don't see you going out? Yes. Okay, make a stealth roll then. Uh, make it with advantage, all things considered. Twenty-one. Yeah, yeah, you're the, you are you are a ghost in the night. They have no idea. I will go check out the glow and sort of do like a quick canvas and then come back. Okay. The uh, as you yeah so as you as you come in like the there are kind of uh, spiraling organic almost paths that lead from the beach in uh, inland. It's not like a straight hike, you know, but you sort of turn around and uh, follow these, the, the easiest routes that have been carved out by you know, who knows what processes over, over who knows how many years. And uh, as you approach the, the base of this spire that towers overhead, you can, uh, you see there's a, uh, at the very base of it, where it's broadest, and the, the the shapes of the stuff that it's made out of kind of twist and and um, you know uh, 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 twirl together, rising upward into this big mammoth mass. Uh, but at the base of it, there's a there's a gap, and um, it looks almost like the the entrance to a tunnel that's opened there, or maybe a mouth. And there's a uh, uh, a faint, very faint glow, kind of coming from, coming from, uh, from there. Look for any sort of tracks or anything to see that it's been well used. Uh, no, you don't find anything to indicate that there's been traffic here recently. Uh, it would be very, it would be very. Uh, you know what? I'll tell you what. Give, give me, make a uh, make a survival check. Uh, this is a coastal thing, so it's with advantage. Uh, so that's 14. a 14. Yeah, that's not going to be high enough to tell what I have in mind here, unfortunately. So, can I make yeah, a, it's just... Can I make an investigation or history to see if I can notice anything of note or see if it sparks any memories of something I might have read? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, sure. You, you. I, I think probably. You know what? You tell me which one you'd prefer. Uh, which one you you you're interested in? Inve uh, investigation or history? Let's go history. Okay. Nope. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's. You know, there are all kinds of stories of haunted islands. You know, where there where there are terrors to be found and. So far, this one certainly uh, fits the bill. Which of those stories is true, you know, and which of them is just things that sailors made up to entertain each other and uh, frighten each other over uh, over camps? Who knows? All right, I'll go back and I'll wait for the rest of the group. All right. Uh, so the, you know, early, early, early in the morning, you know, well before dawn, the alert goes out to stir everybody and get everybody awake, uh, awake and eating and uh, so that, uh, you know, and drink, drink some fresh water so that by the time the sun's up, you're ready to, you're ready to work. And uh, 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 kept as you're, as you're sort of refreshing yourselves, getting, you know, getting cleaned up to whatever extent you do that sort of thing, uh, Captain Harry and finds the four of you and says, uh, so what, uh, what have what have you decided? What's what's the plan? I look others. at I look at Key and say, "Your oath, your call." There were conversation I had with the fish people had a few other details. They required me to swear an oath to get the four of us back to the shore that I would leave a sacrifice behind to the sea demon if we went there. She kind of looks at you askance and says, "Uh." Given the secrecy, I suspect that leaving a few copper pieces won't do. No, it's a bloodier, deadlier affair. Hmm. So, uh, she kind of looks the four of you over again and says, So, has one of you volunteered to go under a knife? Not we're as such, Captain. We were wondering if there was someone in the crew you didn't like. In my crew? Hell no. Uh. You can't have one of my crew. Well, we could always draw lots. If if you want if you want to recruit volunteers to draw lots, that's that's your affair. I won't stand in front of a of a of a sailor seeking an ugly fate, but I won't order him to it anyway. Not if not not a fate like this. Of course, we could always slay the sea demon. That's actually not a bad idea. I mean, we're not owing anything to something that's already dead. So why don't we find out what this demon is? Find out uh, if it's something that we can um, dispatch. Then we'll draw lots. So, so Harry kind of nods and says, uh, well, make your, mind, make your plans, make your minds up and set out soon or if you decide not to set out. She kind of gestures towards the ship. There's plenty of work to be done. We told and you we uh, would get the treasure, and we will get the treasure. All right, she nods and says, uh, good luck. Empties out her pipe and goes back to uh, start captaining people around. All right, let's go get the lay of the land first. We may find we don't have to leave a sacrifice. I mean, they're cursed in the water, right? They can't come ashore. So who's to say that the thing that they're scared of isn't already dead? I appreciate your optimism. <laughs> Thank you. Finally, someone understands. So I say we uh, we go check it out. I I related in my voyage, my little trip last night. Hmm. So do you think we can get in from there? Probably. I'm ready when you guys are. Let's go right now. I like this plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. I can't have my courage questioned. <laughs> I gather my uh, belongings off the deck, nod to Pataja, and say, if I'm not back in three days, send for help. And uh, <laughs> uh, make, uh, make my way back to the party and say, all right, let's, uh, let's take a look at this vaunted sea demon and what secrets that place may hold. Were there any animals on the island? You have not seen a single one. Was your sacrifice required to be humanoid? They didn't really specify, but the gist of it was yes. 
Yes, it should be humanoid. Now, what did they say humanoid or did they not say humanoid? They said we would have to leave one of us behind. What exactly? One of us, as in one of the four of you, one of the crew, the ship. One of the chickens aboard ship. (laughs) One of our boats. I mean, you could go fall into the ocean out there and try to get some clarification. The sailor... Clearly, clearly none of you is lawful neutral. <laughs> no. The, the sailor kept mentioning uh, that the sacrifice must be bloody. He said that three or four times until I got him drunk enough to shut up. Because my thought is if we have any animals aboard ship, that is technically one of us. Oh, I'll bring a chicken to the fight. Don't worry. Well, if we, I'm not talking about your courage. I'm speaking swiftly of an animal. <laughs> if, if, if if there's poultry, uh, I would I would consider that a a, a poultry sacrifice to make. <laughs> Move away Can I give from him, him um, inspiration? Just in case. <laughs> you you can give him inspiration if that. Uh... If 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 that if that expression of joy fits in with one of your personality traits, <laughs> no, it doesn't. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> oh, well, it's an out of character expression of joy. It's the, thought, it's the thought that counts, though. You know, it really is. You can have one imaginary inspiration point. <laughs> right. Thank you. I I'll hold on to that one. Yes. <laughs> so, um, all right. So you you said you he- start heading inland. Yeah, or is there? Yes, is there I think I think we're all in agreement. Yes. 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 All right. Let's. All right. So you, and you're bringing with you uh, the what what supplies there are on your sheet, um, I, I I presume. Yes. Um, so if there's anything you're not bringing because you just don't want to lug that around, that's fine. Just kind of make a note of it, um, or or we can put it in the put it another way. Uh, are you going? you know, are lightly burdened, in which case you're less likely to have something you might need if it's on your sheet, but you went light, or uh, or just going to assume you're bringing everything in, in a big heavy backpack. I'm going to, to uh, I'm going to, I'm going to leave the, the bow and arrows, uh, but I'm keeping everything else. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to need stuff in the pack, the thieves tools and all that, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, that doesn't really that doesn't really unburden me over much, uh, but uh, I'm just I'm not, I'm not going to have ranged attacks for this. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Stardust, how about you? Any, anything to say about what you're bringing with you? I'm bringing the whole arsenal. All right, and key. We're this is just an exploration, right? It's not a we're not planning on going in yet. Right. Oh, 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 yeah. We're going in. Bring. Okay. Bring, get in. And I'll bring everything. All right. I'll bring and, extra uh, food, definitely. Okay. And uh, Thalos? Uh, my kit plus extra food and a chicken for the sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> How, uh, what's the disposition of the chicken? Do you have a, you have a crate for that? A, a bag? It's not uh, a trained chicken, unfortunately. Let's go a little crate. All right. So is, are you uh, sort of hauling that with a rope around it as a handle or something, or, or what? Yeah. Uh, Envision, I have a, a big stick, a little rope, and a crate chicken attached to the stick with a rope. Okay. Over All one right. shoulder. It's, it's hobo chicken. It's, yeah, <laughs> sure. it's, ch- it's chicken on a stick. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, all right. So, uh, so describe for me, as you set out, I've kind of given you the – a description of, of what's out here so so how do you make your approach and you know you tell me what's what's your what's the going like let's what you uh mean or what's your order thallus do you want to take the lead on this since you've uh, already covered the ground do you want to carry hobo chicken i'll carry the chicken and i'll i'll come second excuse me i'll come last all right i'll take point bow out Going pretty much directly there, avoiding some of the maze that I got lost in the other night. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, it's it's easy going. I mean, you know the way now, having come out here in the night, and it's it's light out now, which makes it all the all the easier. And uh, as you you so you all see the uh, the, the 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 gap, or the the tunnel entrance at the base of the great spire, and uh, it looks it looks kind of ornate and organic, 
uh, as you come closer, your eyes have to kind of adjust to what you're seeing inside. And it seems like there's uh, this sort of faint, uh, you know, very faint light inside as the, uh, as the tunnel, uh, as the tunnel kind of twists and winds downward. Uh, there's, there's this constant drip and the smell that comes out of it that's kind of a mix of, of living and dead sea life. Well, I'm Ugh. glad I brought the long spear now. <laughs> I was just going to complain that the chicken smelled bad, but uh, I, take, I take it back. I take it back. The chicken does not smell bad. I now have a new standard for what smells bad, and it has nothing to do with this chicken. Well, your your friend the chicken is getting less and less happy as you get closer and closer to this uh, hole in the in the coral. I uh, I turn to the chicken and say, "What are you complaining about? We have to walk back without you." Squawk! <laughs> Go into the hole. <laughs> yeah, um, the uh, the floors, the walls are are um, are the same kind of strange coral, hard, sharp stuff as you begin to descend uh, interrupted occasionally by uh by it becomes more chitinous you know more more like the the surface of some insect or something and and then and then sometimes there's even gaps where it's it's this sort of pulsy slimy flesh instead in between the ever the, it's narrow cramped uneven uh often Steep. Uh, Are you particularly it, gifted? Sorry, Shane. Are you particularly gifted at seeing in the dark there? Uh, or uh, shall I take point? Th I think Thallus has. He's got dark vision. Yeah, oh, I do. By all means. Yeah. Then. You want a spear? It's. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I can it, see him at a distance. The, there, there is there the there's phosphorescent algae here and there that provides it the equivalent of dim light uh, as you're going in, which means you can see pretty well uh, up close, but it quickly gets darker and darker as you go. And you, you sort of hear the dripping of water and occasionally as you're all going down this, uh, this passage, the distant echoing slurping of something, almost like something organic closing or opening. I want to uh, make an investigation check to see if this is, in fact, uh, living uh, tissue, or uh, some of some of that slimy flesh that you, that you occasionally pass. Yeah. In, in, in yeah, the yeah. How do you how, how do you go about investigating that? Uh, I'm going to take a pinch of it, and and pull it like I'm pulling like I'm pinching uh, skin. And I'm just going mm -hmm. to see if it uh, tears free uh, or what it feels like. Does it feel, is it, does it have any heat to it? Does it have a pulse to it? You know, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, make an investigation roll. I get ready to stab it if it tries to grab him. Eh. Yeah. You, so the, it, it's not, it's, it doesn't feel warm. Um, you know, you don't think you feel or hear any kind of a pulse, you know, like you would expect from, from a heartbeat. Right. Um, the, uh, the, the, the fleshy, the slimy, fleshy stuff itself is kind of surprisingly, uh, surprisingly tough and rubbery. Okay. All right. Okay. I will wait for more intel. Can I make a nature roll to try to determine the same thing? Uh, yeah. 21. Oh. oh, okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, so as if you as you know, and you kind of look at the the flesh that Baldo is obsessing over, um, you certainly think that that is alive or part of something that's alive. Um, the extent of it, you know, what here is. I mean, you, you know, you, you're you're a specialist in coast, and that mean in, in coastal terrain, and that means sea life as well. So, you uh, 
you know, you, you know full well that there are, there are beasts and plants in the sea that are that are immense because they're kind of conglomerations of of many different uh, creatures, you know, animals and and things. Hmm. We'll whisper all that back so, to the group as we're moving forward. I suggest you get behind me, and we can all sort of use the shield. Oh, I'm starting to feel really bad about this chicken. I feel better about the chicken. <laughs> so as as you descend, uh, Astartes, are you taking lead then? Uh, yes, I think so. Right. If uh, everyone will uh, wants to uh, have me be the plug at the front. Sure. <laughs> and right. I will just poke at anything with the spear point that looks threatening. <laughs> Ready to let go at a moment's notice. I still like being the, in the back. I'll think of the very rear as I have a ranged weapon. <laughs> All right, I'll be third. I'll stay behind the starters. That's why I... the archaeologists found them. <laughs> I also <laughs> have dark vision. Oh, good. So it's just a human. Well, it's a good thing I'm I'm surrounded by people who are better than me. <laughs> as you as you're descending, the uh, this this cramped passage kind of um, widens and opens a bit into into this uh, this strange um, this strange gap that sort of rises in kind of an egg shape overhead, and there's a in the center of this chamber that's filled with these kind of strange coral protrusions, there's a, what looks to be a, maybe a shrine made of the same substance of some indefinable shifting kind of shape that rises up uh, overhead. And around it, uh, the, around the shrine, at the base of it, there's, you see the, the glittering in the dim light of uh, the gleaming of of, uh, of coins, and as you come closer, you can hear this sort of strange, this strange kind of skittering sound and and gnashing sound. Mm. And uh, let's see, it looks like a Stardus is in the lead. So, so at this point, you've kind of come down enough that you're just you're 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 not you haven't yet stepped into the chamber where people can get past Astartes. So Astartes, you're the one that should tell us how you uh, what you're what you're doing. Stop. What's that? I just shout. I, I shout. I whisper. Shout. Stop. Okay. Because I don't <laughs> want to be shoved in there. <laughs> uh, would the would the members of the party who can see in the dark please move forward? Sure. All right. Uh, who's uh, so 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 Thalus? Is that you, kind of shuffling through? Hey Shane, does this count as low light or um, slightly obscured? Um, I don't think so. I mean, there's plenty of things you can hide behind that would certainly count as that. It's dim light, but uh, uh, so if it says dim, because then that, I can attempt to hide light. even when I'm only lightly obscured. Right. Yeah, I don't think so. That's going to be right. like fog, you know. Um, I'll move ahead. Okay, so you can, yeah, you can move yourself. You can move yourself forward. What you see is there are a few, like three or four, uh, old corpses around this shrine. Uh, they look like it looks like it looks like bodies that belong to the some of the sea folk that you encountered earlier, rotting. And there are sh immense crabs feeding on them. Ooh. The crabs don't seem to be paying you any attention. When um, you say immense, it, what do we mean size-wise? It is a medium beast. And so think, of, think a crab, but maybe 150 pounds. Ooh. That's a lot of drawn butter. <laughs> <laughs> How many are there? There are three, and beyond them, you see the, you see it kind of narrows again, and uh, another, and the passage kind of continues further down. And there's coins. I would like do, the coins. Do we want to like have crab tonight? 
I think if we can avoid the crab, we should avoid the crab. But not but, the coins, right? Oh, no, no, not the coins. We, the coins we take, but we avoid the crab. Right. Um, can I try, gentlemen, let me, uh, and, and lady, let me, let me do a quick assessment. Uh, can I uh, move by them and attempt to enter the room in stealth? Yeah. All right. Um, where, where where are you wanting to wind up first before you uh, make your roll? You, know, well, you can move your you can move yourself wherever you want. That I should say you don't you know, but then we'll describe it. Okay, I can just barely see the crabs at the edge of the light. This is really cool that the map does that. What's what's on the north uh, side of the wall? Is is that a protrusion? Uh, yeah, it's it's just lots of you know, it's different weird malformed growths coming off of the wall and and uh hanging off of the off of the stuff all around you okay totally so nothing to worry about right well i uh i was hoping to use it as a um as cover yeah there's lots of there's lots of growths and protrusions here you can hide behind let's uh i'm just gonna move to right here uh in between the growth and the rock here, I, I know I'm close to a crab, but uh, uh -huh. I'm going to trust my stealth to get me through uh, and just be as quiet as I possibly can and as light on my feet. Um, I'm just, I'm really, what I'm really trying to do is see if I can find a way to the stairs. Well, I mean, it would mean, it would mean going between the crabs and hoping that they continue to not be interested in you. All right, then uh, I'm going to head to the pillar in the center and uh, check it out and look at the coins and see what I'm looking at here. And I'll uh, use stealth to get there. Yeah. Okay. So give me a stealth roll. Uh, oh, thief. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they they can they seem to continue to be content to uh, eat the meat that's in front of them, and so you get up to the you you reach the shr the, the the shrine in the center, and it sort of rises grotesquely above you, you know, kind of growth after growth, um, sprouting overhead and kind of winding in weird ways. Uh, it almost looks like it's moving, but not quite. You know, and you can gather up some coins. It's it's not it's not a it's not a fortune, but presumably it's better than just leaving them there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna scoop a couple of handfuls of coins, and mm -hmm. uh, kind of motion to key, and then put my finger to my lips to say shh quietly, and then have her come forward as well. All right, key. What do you do? I will attempt to come forward quietly. All right, where are you? Uh, where are you heading? Uh, towards Baldo. Okay, yeah, you can get you can get up behind, next to Baldo by that shrine without any trouble. All right. Um, are you are you, you said you're doing it quietly, so you can make your own stealth roll if you're trying to be that quiet, or if you're not, then you tell me. I'll try to be quiet. It's not really something I'm great at. Right. Yeah. And you're probably rolling at disadvantage anyway, so. Uh, okay, so let's see. Move your move your token mm -hmm. where you're where you're going. I think you said behind Baldo. So the so one of the one of the crabs kind of turns and its 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 giant antenna kind of quiver and or eye stalks, you know, and uh, and it starts it sort of shuffles a little around the cave to investigate you. I think it saw me. All right. Uh, so Thalos, Astartes, uh, are you two just sort of sitting tight? Or, yes. or what? For the moment. All right. Then Baldo and Key, you're, uh, you're in the lead here. You All right. The last what's I'm, happening. I want to uh, skirt around here. And I probably right. need to make another stealth check to see if I can quietly position myself <laughs> between these two chuckleheads and keep uh, gathering. So you're going like around the shrine and, yeah. and maneuvering between the crabs as they're feeding? Yes. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're, are you trying to get out to the stairs on, uh, not stairs, not really stairs, but you know what I mean? The, the slope on the far yes, side. Yes, that's right. All right. So, uh, so another stealth roll for you then. All right. And let's make sure that it's actually, you know what, I'm, I'm going to make a regular D20 roll and we're just going to add plus five to it because I, I don't trust the skill tree right now. <laughs> so 10 okay. plus five is 15. 10 plus five is 15. All right. Very good. Uh, okay. So you managed to, you managed to very gingerly, you know, creep sideways kind of between them and avoid stepping on the, the rotten stuff that they're feeding on wow. until you reach that far slope. Uh, in in one piece. Okay. Did uh did I did the crab react to the noise of her armor clanking or is there any way for me to know that? I guess there. I guess uh, there's that, no way. For oh, it, probably a nature roll is what what that would take. I, uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a crap roll, but I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, yeah. Plus two is nine. I don't know anything about crabs. All right. If you're very ginger, I whisper, you can make it around. One of one of one of the one of the crabs turns and looks at you. Oh, nuts! And kind of shuffles closer. You know. Um, I freeze. Twitching, twitching its 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 claws and its uh and its eye stalks. I, and um, I. Uh, slowly start lowering my pack to the ground, thinking, I wonder how quietly I can get to that crossbow. Uh, uh, you can, you know, you tell me. Can uh, I wait. use anim animal handling to soothe the crabs? <laughs> <laughs> soothe? <laughs> soothe. <laughs> Are crabs soothable? <laughs> 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 the crab whisperer. Um, <laughs> Get a pot of hot water. I'd allow it at a disadvantage. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, if you make a crazy animal handling roll, bear in mind you do get advantage because this is a coastal thing, um, then, uh, then, then sure, you can, if you can, if you can do that and come up with a way that sounds crazy but it just can't work <laughs> enough, I'll allow it. No, that's. I don't think my sixteen is going to cut that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Crabs are crabs are simple creatures. <laughs> that I think. So, Astartus, you're getting that you're getting that crossbow out. So we can make a stealth check for Astartus being really sneaky about it. All but right. the crossbow is going to be out one way or another. Let's give that a shot. Uh, yeah, the first one is a twenty-one. So very quietly has a crossbow out, and uh, and I'll even say loaded. All right. Now I feel less ineffective <laughs> as I as I continue to watch and wait for them to be just disemboweled. Right. Uh, the key, the one that was interested in you, kind of shuffles closer. Uh, what are you doing? Holding still. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Good. And and let's see, Thalus, what about you? I'm gonna shoot a crap. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. We played for a while, but now we're getting uh -huh. so <laughs> and, enough of this. Seventeen. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, that's enough to that's enough to hurt a crab. What does that say? Six damage. Yeah. Were you uh, letting me know that you were going to shoot so that we could shoot at the same time? I think it goes like I just shot a crab. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn it. Um, Damn it! All right, which uh, which of the crabs did you let fly at? There are two right next to Baldo. One of them that's interested in Baldo, and there's one that's next to Key and interested in Key. The one that's next to Baldo that was interested in him. Okay, so you shoot, and your arrow like slams into the into the carapace and kind of skitters along the carapace into something reasonably soft. And the crab lets out this enormous, uh, in, I don't know, do crabs hiss? I imagine they hiss. But maybe yes, they're hissing. 
So so it like turns around and um and you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a roll is what I'm gonna do. So it uh yeah, it it like turns around and uh lopsidedly because it's got an arrow and it now rushes towards the source of its pain. Uh, its claws going crazy. So everybody everybody roll initiative again. Really a team player this one, I say as I line up. So uh Thalus, that was a thirteen for you, is that right? Yes. All right. And Baldo, what was yours? Twenty two. Twenty two. Stardust got seventeen and Key got eleven. All right, and crabs. Roll a 19. There you go, crabs. <laughs> crabs are on top of things. Wait, did they get any modifiers? I don't think they do. What do they do? They get a plus two modifiers. Crabs are super on top of things with a 21. Um, all right, so uh, so there's been, a sh- there's been a shot, there's been a hissing, and everybody kind of that wasn't expecting the shot to happen is has this moment of startled, uh, you know, startlement. Uh, and Baldo, you get the first reaction with All right. two crabs next to you. One of the, them that knows you're there and is interested. Yeah, the, the one that turns uh, to the arrow mm-hmm. and see, seeking the source of his pain. Mm-hmm. Um, I would hope that that would allow me a chance to make a sneak attack. Um, what is, what are the terms of sneak attack? Do you, can you get called a uh, stuff for that? Yeah. Uh, I don't need advantage on the attack roll. If another enemy, uh, of the target is within five feet of it, that enemy mm-hmm. isn't incapacitated and I don't have disadvantage on the attack roll. Mm-hmm. Given, yeah, under the circumstances, the way I described that, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that because it kind of, is turned and was about to head off in that direction. Yeah, ordinarily that wouldn't apply here, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'll use the rapier, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't know if a fourteen is good enough. Let's. Uh, crabs have natural giant crabs have natural armor uh, against which you need a fifteen or higher to pierce it. So no. So your so your sword kind of. Blink. slams into that that hard hard shell blast and and the crabs uh well it was gonna go after a source of pain over there and then it realized that must be the where the pain's coming from right here and it <laughs> comes after you yeah sort of thought that would be the uh, upside of that all right 14 armor class don't fail me now Okay, so he rolls <laughs> ooh, another 19, so a 22. Uh, failed, which, failed me. Which, which, which fails you. Yes. And, uh, and his, his horrible pincher slashes at you for four points of slashing damage. All right. That takes me to and just over half. Yeah, yeah. On, you, you may have noticed on the tokens, if you click your token, you'll see the little circles above uh-huh. and the red one is the red one is hit points gotcha um and it's also keyed to your hit points on your sheet so yes if you mark them off on your temporary hit points on your sheet that ought to change on the token it has all right Very it's good. gonna be a quick campaign <laughs> it's that horrible first level in this that i warned you about um the uh okay so the other giant crab that's near balto baldo sorry um uh, it kind of takes a few steps back and is being alert right now. So it disengages, withdraws, and looks around with its beady eye stalks to figure out what's happening before it uh, before it rushes in. And um, the other one, the one that's nearer to Key, that was coming closer to Key, it like disengages from key and scuttles away and tries to scuttle past baldo so baldo it's getting cl- it's close and runs close enough to you that if you want you can give him a stab of opportunity i possible. will make an attack of opportunity because uh i've got to redeem myself from that poor showing right uh, okay and and i'm not redeeming myself 
There is no, <laughs> All right. There's no redemption. Uh, they're they're just just ugly, ugly crabs. Just me slapping it with my sword and saying, "Flat of my blade, lackey." <laughs> Astartes, you have a cross loaded crossbow in your hands and a spear and shield next to you. I'm gonna try to concentrate my fire on the one that's already wounded, in hopes that All we right. can remove a threat. All right, so I'm gonna move your you move you you're gonna need to move forward a little bit to come out of that tunnel to see just for line of sight, but you can just barely see past that shrine that big crab where it's uh the wounded crab that's it's trying to chew Balto or Baldo up. Will do. And you can take your shot. Uh fifteen will do it. And yeah. eight damage is enough to put that bolt right through the thing. And it kind of staggers and goes limp and twitching and harmless. Thanks for the distraction, Baldo. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to do it. Uh, let's see, Thalus, it's your turn. Uh, so there's one crab left. That's yeah, one, one ran past Baldo and out of sight, and the other one is across the, the cave. Probably not really where you can see it, because it looks like you're directly on the upper other side of that shrine from it. But that's the last place that you knew it was there. So I can move there and see it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, more or less. Sure. As I started this, let's take another shot. Okay. Uh, that Good lord. 24. Oh, 24 a hit. All right. So you put an arrow, an arrow in it, and six damage. So it uh, it kind of you know lets out this hissing, unnatural sort of squealing sound, and uh, key. It is your turn. All right, I'm going to use sacred flame. Oh, all right. And how did, what is, what does that look like? You let out a a a, a call on the power of uh, of uh, what's his name? I forget your god. Hayek. Yeah. Let's Shahayek. see. Verbal and somatic. Which one is somatic? Is that that's like, like no, wait, hand, wave your hands. Yeah. Okay. Hands, hands, gestures where you're, you know, making holy symbols that are sacred to your god. I uh, hold up the medallion in front of me and make a ritual gesture and say for Sahayak and a sort of curling black energy comes from my hand and shoots towards the creature. All right. Is that an attack roll, or does he make a saving throw? Um, let me check what it says. The target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Let's see. I'll roll that for him, and he has a total of nine. DC's 13. Nice. So he fails. Uh, so it takes a D8 radiant damage. Okay. Four. So he's starting to he's starting to starting to cook over there, and oh, uh, and <laughs> uh, kind of writhes in place, trying to retreat, but finding nowhere to go. And Valdo, it's your turn. Oh, I'm gonna regret this, but uh, <laughs> I really think I should follow the crab uh, to the to the walkway. And uh, try, there he is, right there. Try a uh, sneak attack since he's running away from me. It's not going to work in this case, okay? Because he's he's not that distracted, and he does not want to get stabbed. Very good. Well, then, uh, then a, a regular old attack will do just fine. Mm -hmm. Rapier out. Have at the crab. <laughs> oh, thank yeah, that'll you, stab him. Yes. All right. Okay, and uh, and and you don't kill it, right? But how does how does your stabbing go that that makes him unhappy and hurting? Um, the uh, I managed to aim uh, and place the point uh, at the back of the shell underneath uh, where the uh, some of the soft tissue is. Mm -hmm. So uh, with my with my. Uh, expert aim i uh uh slide it in there to see if i can hit an organ all right well uh you you do uh not a vital enough one because as you stab it the thing kind of 
recoils and whips around and nearly whips the sword out of your hand. And Yikes. it's and it's uh it's its claw slashes uh, chomps into you for four points of damage. Oh. All right. Yeah, I knew I would regret that. Are you uh, are you down? I am are down you to staggering. One, I'm down yeah. to one hit point. So you're so you're already fe- you've been hurt twice pretty badly. Yes, and are and are feeling it. And uh, let's see. Okay, and then this other crab. What's he gonna do? I think he's probably gonna try to go this way away from the pain, and then find his way blocked. So he's just gonna go over here and kind of hunker behind. He's gonna hunker behind the, the the shrine and hold his action with the intent to pincher or claw anybody that comes near enough to be clawed. So Astartus, it is your turn. Okay. The uh, the the there are no crabs in sight. Like you hear Baldo kind of I don't know what kind of noises are you making in getting clawed up like that, Baldo? Um. You hear, have at the, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. I suppose I will try to circle strafe around that shrine while reloading this crossbow. Okay. Uh, as, yeah, as you come around the shrine, you, in fr- ahead of you is, like, you see the one of the crabs that is hiding behind the shrine. You, uh, you know what? Give me a perception roll. Uh, make a perception roll for a start to you might spy it before you get close enough that it can use its held action to claw you. Yeah, he's not playing. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. So you kind of, you know, you get, you get, you come around the shrine in the center of this cavern and one of the giant crabs is like sitting there looking lame and wounded and it kind of instinctively reaches out and snaps its enormous claw at you, but you haven't quite gotten close enough to uh, to uh, to get to get clawed by it, um, which means you you haven't had to move very far, so you can take your shot if you like. Oh, hello. Yes. Ooh, that'll do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, where do you shoot this poor crab that kills him dead? Uh, I shoot the eye stalks off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, all right, that was the start of so Thalus, It's your turn. Reaction shot. All right. I'll shoot the same crab from last round. Uh, let's see. The only one that's still up and about is okay. the one that's fighting Baldo. That's on the other side of Baldo in that cramped, narrow passage on the far side so of the cavern. This one's gone? Yeah, there are two pretty close to each other next to the shrine that are both dead now. Astartus, Astartus just crossbowed one of them. Don't worry, folks. I have every intention of getting out of the way. <laughs> if I move to here, can I see and shoot? Yeah, it's going to be a disadvantage because of the, you know, the it's so hard to see and Baldo's there. Oh, poor Baldo. It's so uneven. I mean. All right. Can I move here and hold my action to shoot once Baldo comes out? Yeah. Yeah, when you hold an action in 5e, essentially you just sort of say what are the conditions at which that action happens, right? And so if that condition happens, then you then your action happens. Uh, all right, and then yeah, gotcha. And uh, Key, what about you? I want to move up and touch Baldo and do cure wounds. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, you can move around behind. You have enough. You have enough. I think you do. Can you let's see? You're gonna have to go uh, one, twenty-five. Two, Sorry, I was I was right here. <coughs> Pardon me. So uh, right there. So it's gonna be like one, two, three, four. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. For twenty-five. No All problem. right. Do I? I don't have to roll an attack. It's just the. Uh, right. You just roll your um, healing dice as you, you know, encourage him to feel the soothing piece of. Probably not god. your god, who's the death <laughs> god, but probably one of the more friendly gods. Uh, I don't imagine you know, their hospital gets very much in the way of... Right, yeah, feel the, feel the soothing peace of uh, 
death which, of Sayak is probably not the not a comfort. Uh, but you get uh, ten hit points back, which is going to be enough to bring you up to maximum. Yes, though, right? I am back to full, which is nine. Thank you, Key. Yeah. That Sorry, was what you were so I sore about. The healer. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Um, all right, and that's the top of the, top of the turn, which is Baldo's turn. Okay. Um, Bravely up there, out in front, fighting yeah, the monsters all by himself. Yes, <laughs> and and realizing that uh, me and the chicken are ill-equipped for such a uh, thing. <laughs> are so, you still carrying the chicken around? I I, I never dropped it. So yeah, oh, as far okay. as the chicken so, is, yeah, has been boinging and waving around, and there's yeah, feathers flying. Squawking like crazy. Yeah, yeah I so, about that. Uh, you know, uh, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to use my action to disengage. All right. And just step back into the cavern and yep. out of the line of fire. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see. The crab's turn. The crab is, uh, is... Let's see, he was trying to retreat earlier. I'm going to, he's not all that smart though, so I'm going to roll another die for him. Actually, I didn't think to myself what he was going to do. So if I roll high, he's going to continue to come after Baldo. Uh, that's the low side of a d20. So he thinks hard about it and then decides to move on, move further out of sight and doesn't right. come crawling out where he can be shot. Okay. Yeah, and it's 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 quieter now, other than the sort of distant, unidentifiable moans that you hear from somewhere. And the I uh, constant dripping and panting. I walk over to the other side of the pillar, grab mm -hmm. another handful of coins, and go. I earned these. <laughs> no way! I I might have earned those. I did heal you. By the powers, you're right. I go and hand her the coins I just scooped up. <laughs> it's All somewhere. right. Your, uh, your total take from around the shrine is 17 silver and 13 gold pieces. Okay. Um, Do they look weird? or like? Uh, there are all kinds of coins. Oh, yeah, yeah. There are some that you just don't recognize at all. There are others that you've seen in circulation that were from, you know, a king or two back, maybe in your grandparents' day. I give uh, I give her six of the thirteen gold pieces and keep uh, the seven for me, and then I but I give her uh, nine of the silver pieces and keep eight for me. So I think we're gonna have to talk about how parties <laughs> distribute gold. <laughs> I'm glad the two of you feel comfortable oh. taking. <laughs> <of yourself. laughs> I'm sorry. Did you want some of this? There's some throat clearing behind you. Oh, <laughs> the two misalarmed members of the party wish to renegotiate the term. Gentlemen, yeah. <laughs> Clearly, uh, I I see what the problem is. We have not elected a quartermaster. That's the I problem. Think, I think that should probably be me. I vote for you. I trust me? you. No, not you. No. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I was going to volunteer, but since you stepped out to uh, uh, to, to do that, then certainly uh, I hand him over the twelve gold pieces and 15, the sixteen silver. That, uh, the, so, 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 oh, sorry. These two stuck together. This, there you go. This, the thirteen gold and the seventeen silver. Just write All that right. down somewhere. In can we investigate the bodies to see how they were killed, if the crabs killed them, or if maybe they were sacrificed and left here? It is impossible to tell. I mean, they're, they're, they're rotted. They've been here a while. I mean, they're still here, and they're still rotting, so they haven't been here for, like, years, right? But, but there's no way to tell. Okay. They're, they're so savaged and torn to pieces and fallen apart. Okay. How's so... The, uh... um, yeah, go How's ahead. The seared crab meat. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, you tell me. Are you uh, are you collecting some to uh, to cook? Or are you just trying to eat it as is? Well, it, it was. Uh, it, it's been mild, mildly seared, right, by the uh, by the <laughs> dwarf. 
the, the, the holy powers of the far death god of Iskitai. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, no. I guess that's a, no, never mind. <laughs> wait, are you saying my god's cooking abilities aren't good enough for you? <laughs> Uh, they, they are uh, a frontier I have not yet reached. You know what? I think I think a pound of the seared crab meat uh, might be something to take back with us. Yeah, that'll yeah. make a good story. Uh, I'll crack what? open a claw and uh, uh, I'll pick I'll pick one of the parts of the crab that got that got uh, cooked by the flames mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, dig out about a pound of it and put that in my burglar's pack. Okay, yeah, that goes great with all of your tools and picks and uh, supplies and things. Raw crab. Okay, put a pound of raw crab meat down for you. From you possession. got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with all this humidity, that, that can only go well. Right. So, ahead of you, the, uh, the passage sinks further down into this uh, into this strange island. Uh, you hear weird noises, um, you know, constantly strange smells. And uh, so have you, are you resolved to continue, to continue downward? I bled for those stairs, so yes. <laughs> All right. Then um, why don't you sort your sort your tokens out in the order in which you're crawling forward through this next passage and then we'll fade out on these adventurers for now and return to them in the I next will take point. installment. I'll follow the starters. All right. And uh, I'll be third. All right. Down further into the into the island of the sea demon you go. This episode of Arc Dream Presents was recorded on Zoom and Roll20. Special thanks to Mark Finn, Chris Spivey, Acer and Megan Tolentino, and Shane Ivey. Links to their work can be found in this episode's show notes. If you enjoyed this episode of Arc Dream Presents, be sure to subscribe and give us a rating on iTunes or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. This episode's music is Five Armies by Kevin McLeod of Incomptech.com under Creative Commons. Visit filmmusic.io. For more information about the Swords and Sorceries series, visit swordsandsorceries.com. Arc Dream Presents episodes are produced and edited by Rachel K. Ivey of A Minor Film School and are copyright Arc Dream Publishing. <laughs>